Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Sonic Movie Show, the only show about Sonic news, movie news, and Sonic movie news. My name is Ethan, and with me here, as always, is Devin. How you doing, Devin? Feeling good. You must be kidding, is the quote I was going to use, but... um. Is I don't that know. I have, Jim there's no Carrey. good quotes for the New Year's. Those uh, are some pretty sick glasses. I'm not gonna lie. I don't remember where I got them, and I'm well, actually surprised where you by the lack of them. reflection. Yeah, those are actually really great. Um, and I'm thinking I'm for the new year. I'm thinking for the new year. I'd be, you know, like how like some podcasters always like the edgy guy who like smokes a lot of cigarettes or something, right. and maybe wears sunglasses indoors. Okay. I could be that guy. I think well, we need to change it up a little bit for the new year. So maybe I'd be the. I don't know. If I, I wish can do you this. luck. Walking the walk is easy. Like, or no, talking the talk is easy. Walk, in your case, walking and talking. You're walking it because you're showing yourself as yeah. being a guy. By the way, they are crooked on your face. Um, but actually, being. It's the headphones, I think. Or my face is just busted, which is also Which is true. Thing. Hey, I wore a pair of not sunglasses, but real sunglasses for, ooh, two years that were crooked just because I, like, sat on them <laughs> or something like that. It was too lazy. <laughs> and then I got this pair here and my other pair, which does not fit on my face correctly because I was wearing a face mask, and they adjusted mm. it to the fucking face mask. And this was a hard N95K or KN95, whatever it was. It was one of the really nice ones. And, like, it wasn't like a cloth thing. Whatever. Folks at home need to know something. They've been dying, mm. Devin. They have been so thirsty. They've been in the desert. They don't know where to go. They've been going the to the holidays. They've been seeing all They've their They've been doing Jared members. Leto retreats in the desert during COVID. And they didn't have <laughs> any fucking back. content. They were just contentless. You know what yeah. I mean? They weren't content. They were looking for content. And now, finally, in this new year of 2024, we're able to give them some content. This is a bit of a twist, though, Devin. Our 2024 content is about 2023. That's right. We're going to be be talking about... No one's never done that before. No one. (laughs) Usually, they do it in 2023, but, you know, we're we're late because we took... Yeah, no one's ever done, like, a recap. We took a break. You know what I mean? For the holidays or something (laughs) like that. We're, uh, we're, uh, hey, and I won, uh, don't watch last episode. I won. Um, <laughs> we're going to be talking oh, yeah, about, I forgot about that. The, that was uh, good. the video games and movies that we uh, liked, et cetera, of 2023. Um, we should have done, um, we should have done music too to make it more complicated and longer. We should have just done your favorite, like, book, uh, favorite, uh, well, shoe that you the wore. only books I read in 2023 were books from the 90s. So The Great Gatsby. No, that was from the, like, the, <laughs> I don't know when that movie was. Moby Dick. The the famous video game character, I, I read Moby Dick a the year giver. ago. The famous video game character, Zelda, was named after Zelda Fitzgerald, a wife of the author that wrote The Great Gatsby. That is a confirmed fact. Wow. I bet you are just take the sunglasses off. <laughs> well, you know I can't be the take the sunglasses. I can be the off. guy. You know take what I mean? Like that's my nickname, off. the guy. Well, on if you're the, gonna on have the, the sunglasses <laughs> on, keep a face that isn't because it, you look like a dork. All right. Speaking from experience here, you look like a dork. Should I just do like, this the whole time? Yeah, mug to the camera the whole time. Show more gum than teeth in your smile. That's that's <laughs> that's what you need to do. Um, <laughs> be like, who are you talking to? <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Doing some of those, you know, from a certain oh, angle. Ethan, I was watching on the telly from earlier today. From a certain today. angle, it doesn't look like you have your hair the way it is, and still looks like you just have a brush cut, which makes you look like like yeah. some sort of like Air Force, like specifically like an asshole. I was on, you know, I was on the airbase watching, watching uh, the new Top Gun, and let me tell <laughs> the you, the new one from a year ago. There's a new one. There's a third one. Uh, yep, Top Isn't Gun there? Atlantis. <laughs> um, <laughs> Top Gun Starring Aquaman. the Navi from from uh, Avatar. <laughs> just the, uh, yeah, Aquaman, uh, the Navi. It's just awesome. Hey, I heard that Avatar <laughs> game is actually like, pretty cool and isn't as much of an open-world Ubisoft game as you would expect being an open-world Ubisoft game. It looked pretty, at least, which yeah. is good for how much it probably Apparently is. that PC version looks like incredible, like one of the best-looking P- PC games ever type of stuff, so... Because um, James Cameron but, made it He's all around. by himself, yep. And not only did he make it all by himself, <laughs> he made it at the bottom of the what? ocean. 
Why do you think it took so long? Because Bro was learning to develop exactly. a video game <laughs> for eight years or longer. That is true. More that game was years. in development for a long time. I know you're talking about the movie, but still. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing, folks. We're doing our the best like games and movies from from 2023 that we've experienced, you know, played, watched, etc. I ain't contrary to popular belief, much of a movie guy. Uh, the only movies I've seen that weren't for this show were old Mission Impossible films. I didn't even watch the new one. Um, we need to so get them back in theaters, folks. We need to get them back, back in theaters. theaters. Well, get lesson where I live right now. There's no theater nearby. That one in the mall has been gone, and then this replacement. I mean, is, that mall is about to be gone in ten mm, years. <laughs> Let's oh, be real. <laughs> I think ten is generous. Um, there's there a movie theater is moving into that spot because what else are they gonna fucking lease it to? Uh, that space to you know. Dude, why didn't you? Why didn't we buy it? Oh, why we didn't we just the have you know uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars to keep a long term <laughs> leasing plan in place? Yeah. Okay, we could have only that? aired Sonic movie <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I, oh, I, the deal Sega. I highly doubt that Regal, because uh, that's what the theater was. I highly doubt that they left their equipment there. So you're talking about buying projectors. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they might have taken the screens for all we know. Dude, you know, honestly though, could you like maybe go in there and like take one of the seats? You know, like you ever seen the old? Uh, um, you're not much of a sports guy, but there's a kind of sports thing of like when a stadium is being demolished for oh, a so new one. Oh, you just take a ratchet they, they take, wrench and you They can take a seat and they usually, like, people are like, oh, I got one of the old seats yeah, from Memorial yeah, I mean, Stadium I in Baltimore. That would be cool, yeah. Well, it's just like you go to a bunch of these wrestling pay-per-views and usually some of the, the, the tickets are for those folding chairs that you can just take with you that are like, you know, SummerSlam, you know, 2005, et cetera, and then... You just have around your card table a bunch of different WrestleMania chairs, and that's a cool thing. Yeah. Um, I didn't watch much movies, is my point here. So my lists are only video games. Now, Devin, I know you do watch movies, I think, and you therefore you have a movie list, so that's cool for I'm gonna, you. I'm uh, a film uh, uh, cons consumer. Yeah. Cinephile Film guy. the word. Cinephile. That that's you want to use. I almost said film auteur, and I'm like, I don't no, make movies. You don't make, you know. <laughs> Not yet. And here's Not the yet. thing, hey. folks. New us, new year, new resolution. I'm just going to say this on behalf of both of us because this is something I've always been like, this is what I'm doing. You um, want to make a movie? No, we're going to avoid using the term content and consumer when it comes to the <laughs> the subject and the act of experiencing that subject. Um, at least I will. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go first because I don't watch movies and I want to get my list out of the way and then you're going to go. So here's the thing, guys. Because he, he doesn't want... The guy going oh first, God. you know. I have sunglasses around here too. I have those Metal Gear Solid Five aviators around here that uh, don't look as nice as you would expect because they're like camo but transparent at a gradient that's less transparent. So it kind of just looks like you have some shit at the top corners of the glasses, unless you're up really close, you know. But they're nice sunglasses. Mm. I like them a lot. I also have um, a pair of beach sun uh, aviators from a company that's called Effing Gear. And their logo is like the bird in the shape of a bird. I bought it just off the. They were supposed to be like cool. you know, like you could keep these in water and they wouldn't like fall apart type of sunglasses. I have for you guys right now. I know you guys again have been been just crawling through the desert of winter of December uh, for content. The top Tundra. five new games. New games that I played in 2023. This is games that came out in the in year of our Lord 2023. Now, okay. I have eight total, but I'm just going to cut it off at five because uh, only one of the eight games I finished. <laughs> and yet I made this top five list. <laughs> and rounding on at number five is the game I did finish. I finished it this year, and I also finished it back in 2002. It is Metroid Prime Remastered oh. for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, newsflash, I did not finish Spider-Man. Uh, I oh. planned to. Uh, this game released, yeah, it was a 2002, I think. Uh, Nintendo so it was GameCube really new. game. But this remake is a remake. It's completely brand new graphics, and it looks... It's also at a high frame rate. I think it's at 60. It's at 900p60, I think, uh, much like Metroid Dread, which was a 2D Metroid game. This is a first-person Metroid game. Um, it is, like, the best-looking game on the Switch, like, hands down. It is incredible. It has a lot of beautiful baked lighting everywhere that really feels like it's in an artistically driven environment. 
because the company that made this, Retro Studios, based in Austin, Texas, back in the day in 2002. Shout and out to Austin, They Texas. also made this as well, um, this, this kind of uh, remaster. They call it a remaster, but it's more of a graphical remake than other games that call themselves remakes, if that makes sense. It's definitely less remaster and more from the ground up. Although, fun fact, it runs on the same engine that the original was in. They've kept the same engine and just been, like, updating it over time. So <laughs> same engine, new body. It's the same code base, too, apparently, which is what made it very easy to port over. Brand new graphics. It looks incredible. Incredible pacing. It's it's a first-person shooter, but it is always the game that fans have been, like, arguing over whether or not it should actually be called a first-person adventure. Because here's the thing with genres. I'm just saying this for the sake of video games, but you can take a similar tact with movies and books or novels, etc. M- In order music. to, there's a lot of different genres one thing can be a part of, but if you want to boil it down to one genre, especially for a video game, specifically for video games, I always look at where is the fun derived, right? The fun in Metroid Prime, to me, is less on the shooting uh, combat and the shootouts that you have with some of these um, aliens that can fire back at you, but just monsters in general, and more on the exploring the entire world and the backtracking and getting new equipment and gear. It is a pretty good shooter, though, um, in terms of just, like, the different variety of weapons and enemies. And, you 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 know, it's not just one weapon suits the entirety of every enemy that you come across with, there's plenty of uh, uh, of this can only take this. This is you know is safe from this. It's also the game where you spend a lot of time uh, because you, it's first person. You have that visor over you with different visors. One of them being a visor that scans the environment. So there's different points in the environment and enemies and objects and whatever that you can scan. Gives you a bit of information on them if you're a lore head, but it's also a collectible that you are graded on at the end. Of course, I always get 100% because, you know, I'm just that kind of guy. But also, it's it's a cool thing where it's like, okay, uh, you know, in classic Metroid fashion, you're getting new weapons over the course of the game, but 95% of the weapons you get are also traversal um, mechanics. So, you know, the Morph Ball bombs that you can lay in Morph Ball... You know, they allow you to boost up a little bit in the air, which gets you up into tiny corners as the ball. But they also break a specific type of material. And same thing with missiles and this type of beam and that type of weapon, etc. And scanning the environment, it's cool because it's not like the 2D games I remember back in the day where uh, 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 a, an easy way to tell like what... Uh, you need what weapon you need to do to break this block to get through this gap or whatever if you think it is there is you would lay a little bomb on it and the block would change to an icon of the thing you need to use immersion breaking this game because of the scanner you'll read a thing oh this thing is made out of this material brimstone i know brimstone is always destroyed by this object so it keeps it a little bit within you know the thing um, but it's a fantastic like, environment. It's like Minecraft, right? With the, the, the... <laughs> sure, sure. Um, it's not. It's not a blocky game. Uh, it's a quite beautiful game. Um, yeah, there are some awesome environments. Uh, the atmosphere is dialed up to eleven. It's one of the very few underwater environments in games where I'm like, this is actually cool and fun. I hate underwater levels. I played that Dino Crisis too. I hated that underwater environment. No, that was good. I was just Come a on. god at the game that like it. I didn't feel uh, powerless. You know what I mean? Uh, I w- I knew what I was doing, but this game it just is awesome. The music is incredible. Um, the first time you enter into the ice area in that game, the music and all that stuff is 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 highly recommended. It's also forty dollars MSRP, which is incredible because more work is put in this than other HD ports that Nintendo's done that they charge sixty bucks for. Forty dollars. Yeah. So that's my recommendation. All right, number four, another Switch game, The Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom, a game I have put maybe a fifteen hours or so into. Again, the rest of these games <laughs> on this list, I have not finished because I've played that a lot more like old games. That sounds like every open world game I've tried in the last, like, There's honestly, cool five stuff years. It's like 15 game. hours is good, yeah. like, <laughs> for me. Um, and I made a point this time of being like, hey, in Breath of the Wild, it's very easy, which is the predecessor to Tears of the Kingdom. This open world Zelda game, it's very easy to get distracted to go on other things because the world is designed in such a way where you cannot see the entirety of your surroundings at any point that you're in. 
There's always going to be a hill that blocks your line of sight behind it, etc. Like the world is built very smartly. Um, so it's very easy to be on your way. It's that old Bethesda thing with Skyrim. On your way to one thing, you see cool shit and you do that on your way there. And maybe you don't even get to your destination in your play session because you decide to do a bunch of other cool stuff. This time around, I'm like, I know that will happen to me and I'm going to let that happen. But I also am going to put my foot down and be like, there are, they have specifically pointed out, the, these four spots in the map are major story things for the sake of the story. So I'm like, I need to do one of these, like, soon. I don't want to roll up at end game level equipment and all that stuff and be like, all right, are you still going to teach me how to do Because that's what some of these are like. They don't know which oh, order sucks. you're going to do these in. Or you or um, you just dominate it because... Yeah. And, like, that's the way it was with have Breath all the of the tools. Wild. You're not leveling up or anything like that. You're getting better equipment. But it's mainly, like... Um, it's like like Dark Souls, I guess. Like your confidence and familiarity with the enemies is just what makes you stronger. And so, like, yeah, I can start a brand new Breath of the Wild save file and dominate. I can go straight to, the, to that game, let you go straight to the end of the game, and just you know win. Um, this time around, they don't. I don't know if that's the case in Tears of the Kingdom. They haven't pointed out. That was the thing with Breath of the Wild. They said the bad guys in the castle, which is right over there, and you can go there right now. But I don't recommend it. But you could, and I did on another playthrough. This time around, they don't say that because uh, you're trying to, to do stuff. They do some pretty cool story stuff. Some of it's very obviously like, how do you guys not realize this is happening? But again, they do not know the order in which you're doing things. The, the powers this time around are awesome. The ability to pick up any object in the environment and fuse it to another object in the environment. People are making vehicles and all this and that. Um, Straight it's up just, mechs it's I've seen on, literally, on Twitter. <laughs> literally um the ability and just like this is a, a traversal mechanic that seems like it's very basic but when they were um you know uh debugging the game and they're they're testing and this and that they had a a debug thing just to make it easy for themselves so that they're not like having to reload the game and just like all right we need to get out of this cave you know, we're in an underground cavern let's just press this button and you can go straight up through you can no clip through the ceiling and get out and then they decide, they realize how much fun that is, and that is just a power. At any point, you could just shoot through the ceiling in front of, above you, and pop out. So the world is designed around knowing that that's possible, and it's just mm. cool. Like, it's cool to be like, you know, you've, you've played games where there's dungeon crawling, and you, you, you go through the whole, you know, dungeon, and you're like, oh, now I gotta get out. Skyrim pretty much always had the end and a secret exit <laughs> right at the end, or just it looped around to the beginning. Um, playing Diablo for uh, a little bit over over the, the the kind of holiday break I had, um, uh, it does not do that. But they just give you a teleport to home buttons. So I'm like, whatever, we'll just do that. It's a little cheap way. Uh, but just be able to like, they don't have to design it in such a way where. They have to let you out at the end so you're not backtracking. Like, no, you just go straight to the ceiling and you're just outside now. Like, lots of cool <laughs> stuff like that. The ability also to fuse objects to your weapons and shields um, is also cool to be like, oh, I can put uh, a giant uh, rock on my club and now I have a hammer to break rock walls. Um, or just like, oh... I put um, this thing that shoots fire out on my shield, and now whenever I'm guarding, I have a flamethrower, you know, on, on me. Like, a lot of that stuff's cool. There's gi there's sky islands that are fun to explore. There's also just this gigantic cavern network underground. Um, it's a blast to play. The story seems like it is more um, involved this time than Breath of the Wild, but uh, I haven't experienced too much of it. That's why it's down at number four. Number three on my list is a game I also have not finished. Marvel Spider-Man 2, developed by Insomniac. Called it. Yep. Uh, this game rules. I've been playing it uh, mostly in its performance mode, so it's above 60 frames a second. Um, it's closer in the 90s. Excuse me. And I have a VR, VRR uh, 120 hertz television that I'm playing on. It looks gorgeous in motion. When I'm doing story missions, I bump it down to the nice pure 4K uh, mode. Every mode has the ray traced reflections, which is cool. The city looks awesome. The just more of traversal mechanics of swinging and the new wingsuit is awesome. I had a fear with the wingsuit. I don't know if you've seen the trailers, but it's like the Spider-Man web, you know, armpit stuff, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Would that ruin swinging? Because that's kind of better how they show it in trailers than swinging. It's 
it's done in such an intelligent way where you use both in tandem where like you will lose speed quickly with the web wings but there is an air tunnel type of network in the way wind drafts work that uh unfortunately it doesn't matter which direction you enter that uh you can go at full speed even though the wind's technically going this way you can still take it that way where you can web wing fly through that but like because of the ssd and the way they've built this city in terms of the different levels of detail on rock and roll uh yes they built this this city on rock and roll it's like that song that the muppets once sang and the muppet movie um <laughs> you know you can really go fucking fast in the, in manhattan and then now queens and brooklyn um such a great uh, great game um have not finished it um it's much shorter than the first spider-man in terms of side content but i do not consider that a loss because the first spider-man game had a lot of different you know side activity stuff and for each one of those activities there was a shit ton of them this time around, there's the same, I feel like, general same number of different types of side activities, but it's not a shit ton of them. You're not bored of the fucking, you know, um, uh, uh, Fisk construction sites or Sable, you know, uh, military compound sites where you're just doing the fights forever. Or, you know, you're not searching for Spider-Man's backpacks a million times or taking a gazillion photos, you know. Um, so it feels like you're actually playing the same amount of game but it's just in less time and that i actually do appreciate and if that means that these games come out faster that's great and hey i don't care i looked at the insomniac leak i know what's coming i i have i actually do believe they can keep the pace with their upcoming schedule that they that was leaked you know what i mean i won't say it if people don't want to know but like i do think that they can actually keep the pace with their future video games spider-man or unrelated um also i I still need a i liked the first spider-man so much and i just i think when miles morales came out i was like oh i want to play it on ps5 when i get a ps5 and then i just never did and then now the second one this is out and i'm like miles Morales is a much shorter game than this one is too because it's a kind of a shorter game just in general concept um but even then like this game opens up with a so Miles Morales, you have the option on the title screen when you start a new save file. Hey, do you want Miles to recap the game for you, and the previous game from his perspective? Um, this game does something different, but it's more... It, it skips a lot. It's basically just like a vibe thing about who they are as people. Um, because mm-hmm. like that is, you know, no spoilers, but like that's kind of like what the game kind of goes into story-wise, you know. Um, uh uh, but uh, yeah, so I don't know how much of that might actually not really feel like a uh, it really catches you up on that game, but it's a quick story and there's cool, unique stuff in it. Um, that I that's a 10 hour story at the most, maybe eight if you just do that. But some of the side mm-hmm. stuff is cool, that's the thing. Like, they did a lot of cool side stuff in, in Miles, Morales yeah. I mean, like, like Spider Man, the first one, I did do everything, like, yeah, and that's it was, and awesome. that was one of the games that I'd be in, like. One of the few time, few times in the last five years that like I've did everything and like did it in a quote unquote quick pace for me. One like, of yeah, this... I know there's some people who can beat that shit in a week and oh, do everything, yeah. but for I'd me like, it was like yeah. five months and like that's pretty good for me. Yeah, like, actually, yeah. and it'll take a lot less time with with both of these two games. I'll just say like, one of the side activities of Miles Morales. Um, you know his uncle Aaron. Um, in co- comics is the Prowler, but. She's ignoring that. Donald he's, Glover, yeah. He's, well, he's in the game, um, and what his he gives you a bunch of side activities of, like, uh, him and uh, Miles' dad um, uh, used to make, like, mixtape-type stuff, and they'd sample their beats from around Manhattan, and they, they'd put markers on your map, and you go there, and you have to find... They play, like, a sound sample, find what makes that sound sample, and that's... A lot of cool cool stuff in there. And this game also has a lot of cool, unique side stuff, too. I'm like, this is cool. I will say, uh, and I'm pro for this, but it is kind of funny. I will just say it's kind of funny, but I'm glad it's there, but it's kind of funny. Uh, The general, like, vibe of a lot of the side stuff, especially when it comes to Miles' school, um, uh, uh, Brooklyn Heights, I think, Um, Brooklyn Visions, something like that is, is the name of his school, and... Uh, there's a lot of side quests as Spider-Man, obviously, um, that involves maybe helping some of these kids or ever just both this game, especially Miles Morales and to a lot of degree that first Spider-Man has a lot of this 
very, very, very modern, progressive look on the way science and technology and diverse cultures can save the world. It's it's I've seen this joke around and it's kind of true on how the games work, but I, I think it's actually kind of cool that at least it's there. It's very much a BIPOC can save uh, the climate. You know what I mean? Like, it's very much like that. thing. Right. But hey. I think it's cool that there's, you know, deaf people and, and this and that, all sorts of people. It's a very diverse thing. Like, is it necessarily realistic? I don't know. I don't care either. But it is kind of funny to be like, it is almost like um, uh, just like, whoa, wait a second, uh, you know. But uh, it's a lot of it. But it, it, I think it's cool. Um, the game is awesome. And um, uh, I unfortunately got sp- – gameplay spoilers for further in the story and then I'm like damn I wish I did not know that because I watched someone else's uh, favorite video games uh, of 2023 video that had gameplay footage and I'm like oh I did I oh. didn't even think that this was going to be in this game and it is and well I didn't play get to that far I haven't even gotten and this is in the trailers I haven't even gotten the black spider-man suit um, in the story, oh, so, I've been doing all the okay. side stuff as they come up because uh, I'm also going for the platinum. Um, but yes, my number two favorite game, a new game of 2023 of all time of 2023 um, <laughs> is Street Fighter Six. This game fucking rules. Uh, I had played it. Uh, you played, yeah, you played the 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 beta where we made our freaks. Um, <laughs> speaking about freaks, I played the majority of World Tour mode which is the uh, single-player teach-you-how-to-play mode. It's lower budget for sure because that is the focus of the video game itself. Like, it can't be. It has to be a side thing. It is lower budget, you can tell. It's, you're walking around uh, Metro City, which is supposed to be New York City. You can see the Statue of Liberty. But when you go out to the <laughs> world map which is a cool, like, graffitied up globe because you go to different, like, countries. And it's very funny, like, like oh, I heard there's someone in, in Italy who can make the, the type of counterfeit jewelry we need to make this bag to, to, to help your friend uh, convince the bad guys that you have the bag or whatever. Go to Italy. Here's a pl- – and, like, you spend plane tickets to go to these places. And you just go to Italy, and your character is just – I don't know where I am. It just happens to bump into the Street Fighter character, and she—it's a lot of that type of stuff. Where I'm like, whatever. Um, but uh, um, anyway, when you go to that world map, they show where Metro City is, which is from the Street Fighter and Final Fight universe in the past, and uh, it's very clearly in Canada, <laughs> where they show it in the map. Like it's north of the Great Lakes. It's kind of close to uh, to uh, Western New York, where I'm in and where you're from. Um, but I see the Statue of Liberty, so I know it's, it's supposed to be <laughs> New York. Um, but it's a it, – so I haven't finished that, but whatever. I played a lot of online matches. It's a fantastic fighting system. Um, it does the thing that I want a lot of fighting games to do, where um, they make things a lot, of, a lot of things accessible, number one, but they reward people – who can do it better uh, with better rewards. So there's two, th- two specific angles on this. They have a new control system um, uh, that they recommend for new players, but you can obviously play the, de- the regular old version. Regular old version is a six-button fighter, three kick buttons, three punch buttons, light, medium, heavy for both of them. Specials always use those buttons as well. Um, it's six buttons and, and the, the arcade stick, the analog stick, whatever, you, or D-pad, whatever, right? But this um, modern control system, they call it, is more like Smash Brothers where it's used just the four face buttons. There is a light attack, medium attack, heavy attack, and a special button like Smash Brothers where you press the special button and a direction, and it's one of the special moves. Now, they didn't, ba- they didn't change the balancing on, like, in- on damage or anything. Like, you can go online and use classic controls and fight someone with modern. Like, they don't. It's not like uh, there's also, you know, they don't really change anything like that. There's also a just dumb fuck. You're playing local online as a party mode. There's a literally like button masher control system. That's just keep pressing the button and it will just do a simple combo for you. For the people that never played, don't give a fuck. And you're just (laughs) having fun. That should be, Um, yeah, that that should be like automatically turned on when you have friends over. Because the person who plays it is going to have a total advantage every time. Right, right. Even if you're good, you know what I mean? It's just like... And, like, the modern controls, it's just light attack, medium attack, heavy attack. So if you're standing and you press light attack, it's just going to be one of the two other buttons that classic controls always do. You have less options with modern controls, but it is easier. 
it's more accessible. And the other thing too, um, they have this whole you know new new system um, in place, and one of the things with it is the ability to parry off attacks. It's just and classic controls is what I use. It's pressing the two medium buttons, and you can hold it, and your character takes a parry stance. No hit will will affect them. They parry it all off instantly. However, and you know you can be grabbed out of it just like blocking in, in other fighting games. Um, and like the if you let go, your character cannot act until they're cooled out of it, which is like however many frames. It's it's quick enough, but like. If your opponent sees you getting out of it, they'll go. They can go immediately go in and hit you. Like you know, you you don't want to just throw it out there randomly. But if you put the, you press the parry within the first three frames of you being in parry, you get hit. It's a perfect parry where the game freezes for just long enough for you to input whatever you want to input, and you can start a combo or whatever. So you can punish. Hmm. So it rewards people that can parry really well but it doesn't make it the only way to do it. You know what I mean? Like, you can hold it down. The big thing about it, uh, an improvement over Street Fighter V, Street Fighter V, I played this at launch, launch January or February 16th, my birthday, 2016. So excited for it. The game was very clearly an eSports-focused game. It had, like, no modes to do single player besides a very shitty survival mode, a very, very, very shitty story episode mode, which is basically a fight and you watch like a slideshow. It was embarrassing. Basic online modes, and that was it. Their big thing with that game was Street Fighter IV uh, basically brought back fighting games. Huge audience. They want to make the audience bigger. They want to make their Capcom Cup huge. Um, we're going to need more players for this. We can get more players to play the game if more people that don't play fighting games get into Street Fighter V. How are we going to get more people to play the game? If we make it easier, more people will want to play it. And what they did was, for Street Fighter V, they simplified everything. They basically, this is to be redundant, took Street Fighter IV and just chucked things out. And that became Street Fighter V. That's a huge generalization, I know. But, like, characters, special moves, some of them became things they can only do in certain circumstances. Or they can only use it with a resource. Like, that type of stuff. Just, it became very flowcharty. That game evolved over time and got better. But it's very much a game that wasn't, like... It didn't also make it easier because, like, people get into fighting games and multiplayer games in general because they see cool shit and they want to do it too. And they simplified it for Street Fighter V so much that it became boring to watch. And so no one thinks it's cool and no one gets into it. So they didn't accomplish what they wanted. Street Fighter VI, a lot of cool stuff. And the big thing about it is everyone gets these universal mechanics that use a resource together that changes up the flow on how the game works. Everyone has this drive gauge, they call it. I don't know why I'm doing this. Is This is both bars on the top of the screen. My the hands. drive gauge, folks. The drive gauge. Um, it starts off full. It's segmented. It can be used for a bunch of stuff, and it starts off full, which means that you're not building up to where the flow chart breaks, and now we don't know what's going to happen next. You know, people can... Uh, cancel out of combos rush forward and make new ones using this gauge so like you, there's no real like flow chart so to speak on how the combos and getting in and out works or you know at any point you can do it where like it's this big attack called drive impact where you can absorb a couple hits they won't break you out of it before you hit them but the startup's just enough that the other person could could do the exact same thing and you know and it's and the parry is a part of that. It's also uh, you lose some of this gauge if you're blocking, and you can use uh, powered-up versions of your special moves using this bar. And just the entire game feels more frantic, frenetic, and fantastic. Hey, I used three F words. Um, three Fs. And it's all just a fantastic slurs. fighting system. I have a blast playing online. <laughs> For the first time ever, I'm <sighs> playing like a grappler character. Um, I tried playing some of my characters I've played in the past in Street Fighter V and Street Fighter IV, and I had general fun with them, but like I wanted to play some of the new characters just to see what they're like. I found a character. They're pretty great. I'm like, wow, I understand this system's a lot better at teaching me how to play this type of character, which I've always struggled with before. Um, Street Fighter VI is a fantastic video game. It is worth $60, which is not what Street Fighter V was not worth $60. I paid $60 on launch day for that game, so... I highly recommend Street Fighter Six. That's my number two. I was, I was, I was gonna say, uh, at the very least, I enjoyed the character creation and hanging out 
with you in the metaverse. In a lobby of other freaks. <laughs> yeah. In the metaverse. Uh, oh, there's lots of freaks, but there's a lot of people that because it's the same avatar it's, for the world tour, people make serious characters like I'm a big tough guy or I'm a hot girl. You know, like as of the or I made like an it, it's old hipster. So, it's just so interesting because like you don't play as them really outside of just your wandering in the lobby yeah but the fact that they put it in there and put a lot of thought into it i appreciate it and i think i said it when we were playing it i'm like you're guaranteed no matter what video game you are you're guaranteed at least like a hundred thousand copies sold if you make a character creation that lets you do crazy in shit in the age of YouTube, every absolutely. youtuber mm-hmm. yeah youtube the youtube world people are p- buying it just for that for their let's plays and then People who are watching yeah. they are like, fuck it, I'm doing the same thing with yeah. my friends. And it's you know a, I mean? it's, you it gives you play the enough game. options to make freaks. Like yeah. you can it's not just like me's on, on Nintendo Switch or whatever or the Wii. Like you can make freaks and yeah, that is the character you play as in the story mode, the world tour. So like I made a freak first and because I just wanted to play online. And then like I went to World Tour after and I'm like, well, I don't really <laughs> want to be this guy <laughs> in the story. So I made a different I made a I my guy has a dump truck but he's definitely an old man hipster, a short. I think I I don't know if it lets you pick a, an actual numbered height, but I made him short because I'm short in real life and I'm like this is how I see the world. So this guy's kind of like me and I have a beanie on and big glasses and a big like fisherman's coat and like jeans, but I have a dump truck <laughs> ass and I'm walking around and, and it's just funny. And like, I, don't, I just, it, I just, just I just, I really, if they could add a way where you could fight as them, though, you can. Oh, that'd you could. Be a we, game we could too in that, in that beta. Yeah, in the lot in the center lobby, that circle there, you could engage in an avatar battle where you fight. And like the big thing that you didn't really get to see in the beta, um, we're playing through the world tour mode. It's not that you just pick one of the characters and you just play as that style character. You are picking, you are doing that, but not their special moves. So their basic attacks, what their animations are and throws and how they move, you pick one of those. And you unlock them as you meet these people in the story. Um, and it took me a while to meet my character that I've been playing on online because, like, I kind of want to use this to also teach me how to play as the character I'm playing online. Um, but you earn special moves by uh, uh, improving your relationship with these characters and un- unlocking things. So, like, you can have... You know, reuse fireball and, you know, uh, this person's this move and this person's that move. So, like, those avatar battles are, like, you can be playing, like, your regular buttons, you know, your regular attacks could be, like, you know, Ryu. But then you might be using Chun-Li's kicks and E-Honda's slaps and this and that, like. So, mm-hmm. like, they, it's not just, you know, a skinned thing. But, yes, you can play as the avatars. Um, oh. And it's cool. I don't even remember um, what my dude looked like. I have a picture on my phone. I, I actually made a... Like. I made a, uh, oh no, because I, I uploaded on Twitter a video because I recorded like a, I just did a 360 of all of us. Remember we tried to start a trend and we kind of got it for a little bit there of we would just go up like to people who are playing. or whatever we were doing. <laughs> we, we were playing guitar, but it looked That's like you were stroking your dick or something right. from a distance. Because we were tiny little freaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, then, yeah. and then we were like... Other people started coming around and doing other antics. And then it was funny. These two people were, like, playing, like, clearly for a bit. And then the one guy gets up and just sees a crowd of people yeah, 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 yeah. doing dumb shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's awesome. The lobbies can be like that. Um, I've struggled because I want to platinum this game. It's a very doable platinum because it doesn't really require you to win much online in terms of being at a certain rank like Street Fighter Five did. Um, but like there's different modes and there's like some goofy modes in there. Like, uh, you know, uh, first person to knock their opponent down five times is the winner or like that type of stuff. And like, no one ever wants to play those fucking modes and I need to for trophies. So it is kind of like, mm. I'm just sitting at one of the cabins, just waiting for someone to walk over. And I type in chat, like anyone want to play? And someone's like, no, go fuck yourself. I'm like, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> so there's definitely some very sweaty ass people. Um, but it's a new-ish game. I will say this. I would think that, um, fuck, I know I'm kind of going over on time for this game, but just want to talk, like, very surprising thing Capcom has done, which is different than, say, how NetherRealm has done uh, this and some other games as well. In terms of balance patches, uh, Street Fighter Six has received zero balance patches since it launched in June, and they're not going to release one until um, the second season uh, starts, which would be, like, their second year 
um, in terms of DLC and all that is done. And a lot of people are like, that doesn't make any sense and this and that. But one thing that is a benefit of it is they aren't um, uh, jumping too quickly and and nerfing things that don't actually need to be nerfed. Um, when the game first launched, there were three characters uh, that everyone said were, were too OP. This character's walk speed is too fast. This person can shoot off of his projectiles way too easily on the power-up versions. And, and this character can, can do... Yeah, you know, this super well, and that's not and that's the, that's not that these need to be nerfed. Um, no balance patches, but those are not the three top characters in people's opinions anymore. Now it's these other characters, and one of them in particular, I've experienced online. Uh, very easy for people to just fucking dominate with this person. That I'm like, okay, I think by now they've got enough data that they can assess. This is a different approach because Mortal Kombat 1 came out, and I am interested in getting that game. Also seems like it has an yeah. easy platinum, by the way. Just an FYI. Um, and right out the gate, oh, this character can do this too well, and this can this. And, like, Netherrealm just, like, took them to the chop shop and cut them in half and nerfed the shit out of them, and now they suck. And, like, maybe they weren't as bad. You know, maybe, maybe they, you know, if you give them a little bit more time, and it's... Video game fans. Unfortunately, the Mortal Kombat you community know. comes. I don't want to say the whole, but like at least there's a loud minority sometimes about balance, and then just in general, like they never make anyone happy. So I think sometimes they. I yeah. So since I, I pay attention, beings, is but... that they? But no, I'm saying is that Nether Realm will like, be like okay, okay, like. Yeah, so I think it happens quite more compared okay. to other companies, at least. Okay. From my if they stick to their run. guns and they and they they stand firm on their stances, then I guess that's how they fight it. But um, I'm interested in Mortal Kombat One, but I have not played it. Um, I think I can download the trial on PlayStation Five. I I'm waiting. I think I said before because I am a Mortal Kombat fan and a, uh, fam fan, and I got Mortal Kombat Eleven like day one and platinum the game eventually, and probably put like a good sixty something hours into that game and actually. It was the first fighting game where I like actually tried to learn how to like how I'm supposed to play the game instead of just what I did when I was younger, which is yeah, like I knew what couple of combos, but that was it. But like found out what characters you know I dug. But I, I'm I'm waiting for like the full ultimate edition, which will be out. You'll in get it a in year a year from now. Yeah, and because uh, I, heard I was gypped that I did Mortal Kombat 11. Um, I yeah, I got wow. everything as it came out, but like that's just the way it is with fighting games, though. Like and like. The best time to play a fighting game online is when it is relatively new because that's how you're getting the most people. Like, uh, I went on one of the things I did over over um, December, like kind of a holiday break. So I went back to Guilty Gear Strive to finish that platinum off. And I went online just for fun. And the only people that are left are like just the sweatiest of people just because there's not as many casual people just getting into the game. You know what I mean? Now, obviously, Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter different echelons they're getting in players all the time it's less to a degree but uh you know i don't it's not i don't i don't feel like you got gypped because you had fun now yes you're spending more money overall if you wanted to keep up with the game but you know. yeah it was more of just i didn't have the time and then i'm like oh this character came out that i technically paid for came out and i'm, I'm not you know what i mean i'd rather have just had it all at once kind of thing uh yeah. i i don't like the whole when it comes to fighting games the whole like I get announcing a new character every once in a while, but just I don't know. I, it, it does. I, just, I'm, I guess I'm just an old back, and I actually it, do it's like the it, old though. breed. I'm the old breed, I guess, in the sense like I just liked when everything was in the game, and it was just you unlocked it as you did story yeah. stuff. Because well, that's I what think... I played. It was I played against CPU ninety percent of the time. I rarely played okay. online because I got my ass handed to me too many times online. That I'm like, you know, I'm just going to grind out the story, which was most of the stuff in that game. But no, I'm going to get to it eventually because it does look cool. But you, I also heard some negative reviews on it that I'm like, okay, well. I heard we'll it's a better it game than Mortal Kombat 11, though, at the very least. So you might find it more fun. And I think just the story conceit of it, I think, is just interesting as opposed to just a reboot in general. Um, but you might be, it might be less. So Netherrealm in the past has always been like, here's a game. Here's a little bit of support in terms of new characters and balance patching. Goodbye. Here's a new game really quickly. As opposed to like the Killer Instinct model, which was a fighting game, Super Nintendo era, that was a launch Xbox One reboot that did the model of 
every year there's a new season with new DLC characters that we're adding in. That's the same tactic Street Fighter V took, same tactic King of Fighters is taking, that Tekken has taken, um, etc. I think Mortal Kombat 1, considering how long it took to develop, and considering that they might think of it more of a longer-term game, might become more like that, where it might be... Instead of what you're used to of a wave of DLC characters, there might be multiple over the next few years, which I feel like is better overall because like you're getting uh, one game is getting a lot of support as opposed to being like, all right, we had fun with this, but we're throwing it away now. The competitive community is going to move on. You know the the YouTube you know media cycle is. That going sounds kind of bummed with like I felt like Mortal Kombat One did come still too quick for me, but I'm also not as like a diehard as these other people who are like, I need something new every two and a half years. For me, I was like, hey, Mortal Kombat 11 could have been around for 10 years and that probably would have been cool with me because it was one of those games that I feel like I was going to come back to and then I'm like, oh shit, never mind, make another one. I'm like, well, I don't know. Yeah, every, yeah, I, I understand. Like, I understand. I understand. My number one favorite new game of, of, of all 2023 time. of all of 2023 of all 2023 <laughs> is a game i also have not finished we're talking final this fantasy 16 uh i love this game uh, it is not without its faults and it has faults um but it is a gorgeous video game it has a story that at least starts off with awesome concepts and does cool very cool like political things that i vibe with Ugh. <laughs> that uh, I resonate with um, pretty well. <laughs> uh, the characters are voiced fantastically. The cutscenes are gorgeous. Um, the music's incredible. Uh, is legitimately incredible. Um, Final everything about this Final. game is, is awesome. The combat of Final Fantasy sixteen um, yeah. <laughs> uh, is great, but at least on this first playthrough, because I know there's a harder difficulty you unlock afterwards, is way too easy. It is very much a game where I am mashing all my powers that have cooldowns and then doing basic attacks for a combo until my powers are done with their cooldowns and then I spam them again. But I've gotten into a lot of fights where I only need one cycle of this and I wipe the floor with everyone. It's an action game that I feel like isn't too technical to perfect. Like Bayonetta, um, for instance, that original one, I have less experience with Bayonetta 2, and I've never played Bayonetta 3. That original one, as well as uh, Metal Gear Rising, also made by Platinum, are games where, like, to do it well is hard. And to do it perfectly, where you're, like, going through in a single combo, takes a while. And you're going to be playing that game many times to learn the game. Like, I know what fight's coming up next type of stuff. And I know how many enemies, like, that type of knowledge is required. This game is just way too easy. And there's, like, no RPG elements. Like, yes, you get to pick which powers you unlock and put on your cooldowns. And you can uh, unlock some things. But it feels more like, do you engage with the system or not? And that's your RPG choice. It's a very Bioshock thing. Do you engage with some of these things, or do you just choose not to? There's your choice. That's not a choice. You know what I mean? Um, equipment, and, and, and like, it's very rare that there are two different swords that have uh, pros and cons over each other. It's just, this one is better, and I craft it. <laughs> and then, like, I do side quests, and now I can make better sword, and I do that. So, you know, there's DLC that came out. Um, uh, I haven't played it because I want to finish the game first. And it kind of spoiled it a little bit because it said, like, it takes place right before whatever the end of the game is. So it's like, as if they didn't go straight to the end, then you guys do this. And I saw a person in your party. I'm like, oh, he's in my party. Okay. I haven't gotten that part of the story. Um, the story is, is great in the sense that, like, there's a lot of uh, tastefully handled things, surprisingly, when it comes to things like slavery and imperialism and the combination of them both um etc uh and there's a giant climate change allegory um and how to fight that uh literally being uh we have to destroy society's reliance on the thing that is causing this um which is right. crazy 
Uh, I was not expecting that to be um, the case of. It's cool, but then it gets Kingdom Heartsy in like the bad Kingdom Heartsy um, of uh, weird new bad guy shows up and he's like, "I know your fate and destiny, and you're in this void," and and it's just uh, he's got a name that's like Ultima or or Omega, or whatever, and it's just like the story <laughs> goes in that from direction. Sonic, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, oh, I think his name is Anima. Or maybe it's Ultima. Anime. An old Final Fantasy summon from Final Fantasy X is what this guy shares a name with. Um, but uh, the graphics are amazing. The the giant fights, the boss fights are uh, showstoppers. I guess Platinum actually was contracted to help with some of this game. And I think that's where they, they kind of they worked in. But um, it is just a fantastic game. It's just disappointing me in some aspects where I'm like, oh, man, this kind of could be better. But, like... I also said that about Final Fantasy XV. I enjoyed that game for its faults, and this game has less faults than that game, and this game is more fun overall than that game. So I'm like, cool. That's why it's my number one. These top four games on my list, I will finish this year. <laughs> uh, maybe not Street Fighter VI's story. You have 360 days or whatever. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Now, uh, keeping on the Ethan track, um, I'll go a little bit faster this time. I have the top 10 old games I played in 2023. I played way more old games than new games. I will go fast. Uh, I have an 11 in here. I will skip that. <laughs> Number 10, uh, my, my top 10 <laughs> old games I played in 2023. A game called Unpacking. Have you heard of this, Devin? Sounds I played familiar. It on, Is on it PlayStation. an indie game? It is an indie game. I played it on PlayStation, although I would recommend people play it on computer uh, because it is a mouse cursor game. Um it's basically just it's an a uh, pixel art isometric. Don't uh, you you put stuff in like you have to kind of guess where it every goes level in the room. is this this woman a girl the many stages of her life starts off as a little girl has moved into a new place and her boxes are everywhere and you unpack and you put things where they go. Yeah, I think I, I think um, I saw this uh, on a YouTube video or something. It's Looks just cool. a fun cute game. It's very simple. I beat it in a sitting of maybe two hours. I platinumed it in thirteen more minutes after that, so to speak. Very, very fun game. Um, I was not expecting it to actually have, uh, I don't want to say a it has a story. I mean, you're, you're, you're observing this person's life, but you never actually meet any of these people. You're just unpacking their stuff. But they use that to tell a story. And I will just say, like, just one moment where I'm like, oh, fuck. That's so smart. Each of these levels is whenever this person has moved into a new place. First place when she's a little kid, new house, she's unpacking just her bedroom. Um, then the next one is when she goes to university, college, whatever, her dorm room. And, you know, it's you're unlocking each level has more and more rooms as you get into like actual like she owns a place. The third level is after college. She moves in with a bunch of other girls. And, uh, you know, so there's people's stuff is already there and you're moving in and in, in stuff with their, you know, you have your own room and this and that. And the fourth then like, you know, she graduated, uh, you know, so and you, of all the things you get, you see the, the same objects each time. Sometimes some go away. Sometimes you're like, oh, this stuffed pig has been in every single one that's been her little stuffed animal and she still has it. Like mm. you get you, you know what I mean? Um, this fourth level is when she moves in with a boy. She gets a boyfriend. And this guy has his life figured out and who he wants to be. <laughs> he likes working out and he likes music. And okay. he also, <laughs> it's very clear when you're moving in, um, this is his place that you're moving into uh, because it's full of his shit everywhere and you can't move any of it. When it comes to like for li uh, further levels, you can move stuff that's already there around, but you can't move any of his stuff around really. You can move his Xbox 360 games to be sorted better, but you can't move the 360 itself. She still has a GameCube. She hasn't, you know, you get a little bit of that type of stuff. And when I found, it was just like, oh, shit. Everywhere on his walls is full of everywhere. Every wall has stuff on it, whether it be records or just stuff like that. And um, since the third level, since she graduated, she has her diploma framed you can't put it anywhere on the walls in that fourth level the only spot it can go is under the bed and that's powerful storytelling uh, i feel like you know like her life isn't as important in this stage of her life as the boyfriend's life seems to be in this house i thought oh that's really cool 
Um, I recommend it. As a little bit of a spoiler, but there's not that many levels. There's like eight, maybe. Um, It gets cool. I'm also real dumb. uh, More spoilers. When she eventually gets her own place after that, um, and the, the second one is the same place again. And I'm like, I know she had, like, no money, you know what I mean? She lived in an apartment that looked kind of like mine uh, when I lived down in Baltimore. The second one was like, oh, she must have, you know, she's getting a better job. She has more, there's a lot of stuff being moved in at once. She's getting a lot of clothes. Oh, wait, she has a girlfriend that moved, and that's what it is. I was so dumb. It was like at the very end of that level, I'm like, oh, wait, there's this photo of a family that this main character doesn't have. Who is these, these people? So that's cool. My ninth uh, uh, favorite game that I played that's old last year, Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII Reunion, the, uh, you know, kind of HD remake or new graphics of the 2008 PlayStation Portable original. Um, a great story and great game for the PlayStation Portable. Does not translate as well when we're talking about a $60 um, product on, you know, a PlayStation 5 or PC or whatever, for instance. It is also on Switch. Um Story still has the same stilted script, but the new voice actors. So you get some cool stuff. Or there's some moments where, like, you've watched anime and you've played anime like video games. And sometimes these mm-hmm. games have a lot of anime bullshit where there's a lot of melodrama or there's a lot of hyperactivity over um, proper nouns that were made up that kind of sound silly and this and that and, and, and circumstances. And maybe you have a bad guy. Uh, who who is just so over the top, and it's very anime bullshit. You can love that, and I like a lot of that to a degree. I'm a Kingdom Hearts fan. Um, <laughs> I think it's very rare. I see sometimes, and granted, I don't watch a lot of modern anime. Maybe there's a lot more of this stuff in there. I, I'm not aware. But this came to something with its main characters. I remember this back in the PSP days. It's the same script. Um, but I, seeing it again, I'm like, this is funny. We're like... There's a few moments where the character just calls out the bullshit and says, no, shut up, shut up, when this bad guy is, like, reading poetry out loud out of a book and he's this and that, and the main character's like, shut the fuck up, no, stop, <laughs> I don't care, and it's actually, like, very believable, or, like, his best friend slash mentor is slowly turning into a monster, he realizes he's not completely human, he has cells infused with monster DNA, blah, 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 and, like, you know, uh, towards the end of the game, and the main character meets up with them, he's like, you know, uh, he's, clearly this guy is straight from the path, but he's, he, he, he knows what he wants, but whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't really like that guy anyway. And he's, you know, the main character, Zach, is like, what's your goal? What do you even want? And he's like, he just says, I'm a monster. You know, monsters only want one thing, world domination. And But he says it in a way that's more anime bullshitty. The main character, without a beat, just the timing of it says, it's not even funny, man. <laughs> you know, it, I don't know. It just works out <laughs> in some of his ways. Um 300 uh, side missions. I'm sure it was great on PSP. I didn't do the side missions on that game, but more content in an RPG on a handheld is good no matter what the content was in that day and age. In that day and age. Not now. Uh, these 300 side missions, you could you could quell them to a third, and I don't think you lose anything. Um, my uh, eighth uh, uh, game that I played in 2023 that is old... Guilty Gear XR. So I platinum Guilty Gear Strive, the newest one, and on the day after Christmas, I think. Um, and I'm like, hey, you know what? I have the previous one, which was a PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 game. There's three versions of it. I own all three. Uh, I'm going to platinum those games too. Cool. Uh, these fighting games, they're while they're anime as fuck, and anime fighters generally have double jumps and air dashes and a shit ton of mechanics and usually underage girls with large breasts. Um, this game actually doesn't do that. The underage girl in this game doesn't. I'm surprised, and she's actually fully clothed. But um, this game, it's one of those things where it's like I described with Street Fighter V. They took the previous game, it felt like, and they just took things out to make it simpler, and it failed. Gear to Gear Strive did the same thing. It succeeded, though, in the sense that it actually did get a lot more new players. It's the, fir- it's the only one of those Guilty Gear games to sell over a million copies, and it did it in less than a year. Now it's sold over two. That's cool. So I guess it worked for them. It did it better. But playing XR after Strive, I'm like, there's so many more mechanics in here. Awesome ones. The characters are just wacky and crazy. There's a guy who basically plays billiards where he's bouncing balls around that interact and collide with each other. And they're playing off each other and they're hitting you. Watching a match of two of these characters and the balls play off each other is insane. There's this little kid in a hospital bed, which is, which is a robot. 
that fights, and every time it does a special <laughs> move, it leaves an emblem behind, and if it does something on the emblem, a ghost version of the character does the move again, so combos are crazy. There's this guy who's kind of like, what if the Spider-Man symbiote's also a demon that can be controlled remotely of him, but sometimes is a part of him? There's wacky concepts with some of these characters that it is just insanely impressive that they're there. Um, but the, one of the coolest mechanics that wasn't in Strive, which they should bring back, which I think Mortal Kombat should do, is instant kills. So you have a resource bar in, in Guilty Gear called your tension meter. It raises as you move towards your opponent and deal attacks. It's meant to be an aggressive gauging thing. Um, and there's a lot of things you can do with that. But in Guilty Gear Xard, if you hold down all four of your face buttons, your character for one second charges, and that bar is replaced with another bar, which starts at wherever it was, and is, and is pretty quickly depleting. If during that time you input this very universal um, uh, special attack type of input that every, it's the same move for every character, it's an attack. If that hits the enemy, they die. It's an instant kill, and it's a... It's not like Mortal Kombat fatality, like in terms of goriness, but it's a the character is dead type of it's an anime type of thing, whatever. Um, and like that type of like you could be playing normal, but then someone decides that's where they're going. The flow of the game just changes completely because when that bar depletes, obviously they can't do it. And if they're hit out of it, I'm pretty sure um, then that. But like if they don't actually do, if they fail their bar is gone. So for the rest of the fight, they don't have their resource bar at all. So it's a huge risk reward. You could try to go for the insta kill. That's just something I think Mortal Kombat should do cuz imagine if your fatality was actually part of the game instead of something that's cool you can do after the game. You know what I mean? Which I understand was the whole point of I, I know Ed Boon has said talked about like Street Fighter 2 had at least called the, the the dizzy mechanic but being stunned. He said, we did it after the game because he didn't like it in the middle of the fight, which is a fair argument, and that's where the, the fatalities come from. Oh, they're dizzy. Do something cool. That's where that came from. But I think it'd be cool if, like, in the middle of a Mortal Kombat match, you could do a fatality, but, you know what I mean? It's not something Yeah, I mean, they had, they do. used to have even, uh, I think in the 3D games, you could do some stage fatalities, like, while you're still alive, if I remember correctly, but I could be wrong. Okay. And um, that, like, PlayStation but, like, stuff 2 like, era? Yeah, maybe, um... I still think they should add. I agree that that'd be kind of cool if you're like, you know, there's always with any like a lot of the stage fatalities you can do. Like obviously they're still dizzy afterwards or done, and you have to be on a certain stage and you have to do a certain requirements of things. Mm. Uh, I know in Mortal Kombat 11, like you you could unlock those basically, like the directions of how to do it. Be like, hey, if you're on this stage, you can do this brutality, for example. Like you can the easiest brutality you can do with any Mortal Kombat character is. It's just for each character, like, the requirements are different. But if one, after you do those requirements, if you do, like, an uppercut punch, that's how their head flies oh, off. Into the so, thing. like, I learned how to do that with some of my mains. It's like, okay, I okay. have to block three times. And then as my last hit, I need to do an uppercut punch, and the head will come off. Um, and I learned another one where I think if I threw them three times, I if, on the fourth time as my last hit, if I grab them... I throw them into, I like can tear them apart or whatever okay. with my blood tentacles uh, or whatever for my character. Um, Scarlet was my kind of main in Mortal Kombat 11. I really liked her nice, nice. variety of range attacks, but also if I'm getting my ass kicked, I can throw them, push them away and then do range. And if I'm being their ass, A I zoner. can get close and yeah, yeah, yeah. zone play. Cool. Um, yeah, I was yeah, just I playing through XR and I'm like, there's a lot of cool mechanics. And there's like, Devin, there's like five different ways to block attacks <laughs> that are different from each other <laughs> in this game. Uh, it is insane. And like watching high level players play this at like old Evos and whatnot uh, is awesome. It is one of those. But like you try giving this game to someone who's never played a fighting game, who's interested in like they see it and they think it's cool. I want to learn it. They're just not going to learn that game. But you don't need to learn all the mechanics. I don't know all five ways to block. I know all five ways to block, but like I'm not incorporating them into my fights, you know. Um, but it's just an awesome game in general. And also, what's what's great, the story mode you can completely ignore because you don't get to play it. <laughs> it's just watching it, <laughs> and it's insanely like stupid too. Like imagine if um this robot girl did a genocide 
um, and then like gets rehabilitated because the excuse is she doesn't have emotions, and then uh, she eats a, a cheeseburger and and <laughs> starts to like things, and it's, it's so fucking stupid. Guilty Gear is is, <laughs> is the most what the fuck kind like you? It's like a little kid decided to write an anime. Like I don't know. Um, this number seven, uh, top ten, number seven old game I played in 2023, Tekken 7. Hey, that's a perfect spot for it. Um, I platinum that game, uh, just because I'm like, cool, and Tekken 8's coming around the corner, the end of this month, uh, I think it's like the 26th of January. I'm like, cool, I'm excited, I just want to get some Tekken, and I'm going to play some Tekken 7. Played the story mode, I won't spoil it because I want you to stream it. It'll take you two to three hours on the easy difficulty. It's a short <laughs> It's a short story mode. It's just so goofy and funny. Um, the combat is just, just Tekken, I feel like, even though I'm a big Street Fighter fan, I feel like Tekken is the best fighter. I just feel like it is. It's the most mechanically in tuned with a feel. Like, hitting people, especially in some of the very simple combos or even some of the harder me- you know, mechanics you can do, feels just so good good it's animated flawlessly the music's incredible the graphics well Tekken 7 isn't that much of a looker now at the time in 2015 or whenever it came out in arcade it looked great Tekken 8 looks fantastic i'll at least, at least leave it at that Tekken 7 is just a a solid fantastic fighter a lot of uh, great characters in it um less of the goofy ones which is a little bit disappointing you know the kangaroo is gone kangaroo's not even returning in Tekken 8 it's very disappointing the bear and the panda are at least so that's cool um the number six uh game uh, it's old i played in 2023 that i really like is near replicant version one point blah 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 numbers um this game came out in 2021 <laughs> i think playstation 4 uh and xbox one but i played on playstation 4 to platinum it uh didn't beat it which was like i just fell off because like trying to grind for flowers was annoying i did it this year and man, is this game awesome! Just its story is just is perfect. I want to do a thing at some point about like text and paratext regarding uh, Replicant and Automata, and regarding everything else that's a part of the franchise surrounding it, whether it be facts spoken just off the cuff, the book I have behind me, um, which you can't see, it's actually kind of hidden. Um, that was all short stories and just like the Dragon Guard games and the mobile game and all this stuff, but like. Well, this stuff doesn't matter in regards to the main point of Replicant and the main point of Automata, but Replicant has this addition, this remaster, has an additional um, story segment after the original version of the game ends. So after you do all of the different endings, you do this continued thing, which was based off of one of the short stories that was written in this book, that was Mm -hmm. written after the game, Um, but changed. And I will say this. Um, while I don't to spoil a little bit, like just tonally, you know, people like to describe near the original near replicant, the 2020, 2010 game, sorry, as a tragedy because you have the main character in pursuit of something he wants and needs so badly ruins and destroys himself and everything around him. Now, most of that idea on how he's quote unquote dooms the world it's not in the game. You can, It can be implied, and it is implied that there would be consequences of some degree, but not to the extent that we know it as, especially with Automata, but that comes from the book. A lot of that stuff comes from the book. So just the game itself doesn't necessarily have a bad ending. I will say that. Um, but definitely there are sacrifices, and this new ending, which is the canonical ending now... And, you know, there there might be alternate timelines in, in the near universe. I don't know. And I don't really care. Because in the, the day, like, while the anime bullshit of the series is, is fun to be interested in, it is the, the point, the story point of these two games that I find in the series is why I play it. Um, mm. This has a much happier ending. This has an all is well type of ending in a way that I find shocking. Because near Automata, you finish that game, and that game is a dour to end, but there is a little bit of a like, hey, spoilers for near Automata, our three main characters are alive again, but who knows what will happen to them next? And I, I honestly don't, not interested in, at the time I wanted a direct sequel. Now 
I don't want. I like the way it ended. That was they got redeemed a little bit after all of like the awful killing and stuff that they've done because they went through the ringer themselves and they, you know, they get a second chance at life so to speak. This game has a straight up happy ending. Now, if you take into the account, if you take, you know, what will happen in your automata as the obvious future, then it's not it's going to be a fleeting happiness. But I have a feeling this is an alternate kind of timeline that's starting. And I don't know if you saw, mm. I sent this to you over Discord while you were on vacation. Um, Yoko Taro tweeted, I think a couple days ago, well, at the time of this posting, it'd be a few days ago, just a tweet that said 2024 and just had an image that I don't think is tied to the Year of the Dragon stuff. A lot of the artists I follow on Twitter have been posting dragon-like stuff. Um, I think he's teasing a new game. And... Well, past... yeah, I mean, it looks it it looks like that or something near related at the very least. Yeah, maybe not a game. It could be something, something. My hope that is effect. that it's finally the new game. And now, while, while past me would have been very adamant that it would not be a direct sequel to any of them, anything he's ever done besides just being a part of the near universe and being more thematically tied. And yeah, and the paratext that the anime bullshit is tied because of timeline nonsense. Um. The way this game ends, I think he's growing softer and, you know, that that game is 13 years old now. Nier Automata is, what, six or seven years? It's going to be seven years old now. You know, people grow old. Does he feel like he wants to return to these characters? What if these characters are taken out of, you know, their context of the timeline or whatever? I don't know. I don't know. That's that's my, my thing. That's This game is maybe kind of brought into that. I'll go fast on my last um, five. Oh, I know why I have an 11 in here, because I don't have a number three. <laughs> Doesn't matter. This is a top nine. Um, 11, I'll talk about that later anyway. Uh, well, number four, I guess. Um, old game I played of 2023. Dark Souls remastered on PlayStation 4. Man, this game is great. Um, I platinumed it. Uh, a, a fantastic game. I You've heard this before, audience. Like, Dark Souls, you know it's awesome. It's fun. Um, Maybe I, one day I'll return, even though I'm scared because I think I I'm caught in a. You're kind of I'm in a. You're kind shitty of area when like you don't really have many resources and you're lowish level. Yeah, it's gonna be a grind to get out, but um, you can do it. Um, this game does something that Near Replicant does, but this does it in its gameplay versus Near Replicant does in its story. Uh, I might have mentioned this in the past. So I'll be quick. Um, there is an expectation the player has on how. This game presents itself, and the types of games that in the past present themselves like this. Legend of Zelda, perfect example. In fact, uh, Near Replicant is clearly inspired by Ocarina of Time, the 1998 Legend of Zelda game on Nintendo 64. Young uh, child-ish child uh, leaves his home, explores the different corners of the world to find MacGuffins. Uh, things don't go as planned uh evil is allowed to manifest there is a time skip now you go to the same corners of the globe to do new things as a young adult to save uh a woman <laughs> at the end you know what i mean and and stuff like that it's heavily inspired by that i feel like dark souls is as well in the sense what near does and this is this is going to be a spoiler it presents what you're doing as a very classic um video game uh, hero goes on adventure and does stuff. The bad guy in, in Near Replicant is simply called the Shadow Lord because mainly to Japanese audiences, it, revoke, it, it evokes uh, Dragon Quest always has just, I'm the bad guy. I am the Dragon Lord. I am the Demon Lord. That type of stuff. It's just supposed to be right. a, he's just the bad guy. Oh, it's far deeper than that. There's a kind of twist where it's like, what you think you're doing is not what you're doing. That game does it in its story. Dark Souls does it in its gameplay. There are, I would say, the majority of people, the like 85% of people, don't realize that the kind of hero's journey that they do when they finish Dark Souls is a bad ending. And there's a better ending. There's a better... Like, you are being manipulated. When you're told that you're a prophesized hero, they're telling you what you want to hear. <laughs> and you're not doing something, you know. You just assume it is as a player because you play a lot of games like this. And you just go with it. And if you veer off the path a little bit at a certain point, you could end up in a circumstance where you might find out that's not exactly the case. 
And then if you start putting, if you take that information and you apply it to like, well, this guy said that uh, the 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 prophesized one would ring the bells of awakening, which allow them to go through Sen's fortress. But I heard a lot of people went through Sen's fortress. How? And how come if I attack that guy, because you can kill NPCs, if I attack that guy who told me that, he just uh, realizes you must not be the prophesized one. He goes back to sleep. But I rang the bells. I have to be. <laughs> no, they just said that because they needed you. They want someone to do the thing. And there's like it's much further than that. But like, I just when realizing that I'm like, this is such an impactful. Like, I haven't seen a game do this. You know what I mean? Where like they lie to you, but it's not like a. If this was I don't know. I don't want to say this necessarily. If this was a Western developed Sony first party game. That would be the major story thing. Ellie, you're a bad guy. What? You know what I mean? Like that would that would be <laughs> the whoa. But like the fact that like you probably will never know this, and it requires it's, you to. And it's even not. It's think. not handed to you. You know yeah. what I mean? Because like sometimes it, movies or whatever things that tell a similar like plot twist that you're hey you're the bad guy they like ham over fist it sometimes just yeah. fine. But like it sounds at least from what you're describing at least. You can discover that, but you don't always discover yeah. that. If and, and most like you don't can know play through it. it normally and be like, yeah, yeah, I did it. Very weird how um, I burned to death at the end of the game, and I guess my soul is on fire forever. Great, is that good? I'm told it's good, and maybe you think about it that way. But like, yeah, or even, or, like, or you just think it's cool. Yeah, and even <laughs> then, like that just sounds the, metal the as other hell, ending so. <laughs> and like uh, how that's contextualized doesn't really seem like it's all that great. It's scary, but it's a better future type of thing. And you're not being lied to. It's on your terms, the terms of humanity. Um, awesome. Okay. Uh, fourth best game I played, or third best game I played of, of 2023. That's old. Cyberpunk 2077. And I'm saying old because I played this before the 2.0 patch. And I played this before um, the DLC, which I haven't actually played. Uh, awesome story. Uh, much, much, much better than I thought it was going to be. Like, it's really good. Um, the character of I Keanu need to go Reeves back in one of these days. I don't incredible. know if I should just start where I left off or restart. Make a new, but... make a new character. Well, I mean, like, the, with the 2.0 patch, you're just going to want to start from the beginning anyway because it's a very different, like, RPG mechanics yeah. and all I that. I mean, I haven't played it on PS5 yet either so because last time i played it was on my ps4 pro so you'll get the free upgrade digitally that that's how i played it on ps5 because i got um, the pre-order edition with like the booklet and everything the map and all that stuff yeah i have that laying around too i um, stopped after like 25 or 30 hours just because i was like oh, i'll come back to this and then like something else start came a new out one you won't be back. disappointed you i promise you won't be disappointed but just like no spoilers especially to you directly Devin. um the endings, there's many different endings, and they're all complicated. There is no, like, all is well, happy ending. The endings are great. I've gotten all of them, because I wanted for trophies, but also, like, just to see, like, they're really good. And then, like, a lot of the choices you make leading up to, to um, the ability to be able to do these at all are really good. And, like, Keanu Reeves' character, Johnny Silverhand, is really good. He's a good, complicated character. I know reviews at the time were like, uh, um, uh, Keanu Reeves is is uh, uh his acting is kind of stilted. Like, bro, this is just how he acts. You're asking him to be a better actor, and he's never been a better actor than how he is in this. You know what I mean? Like, he's a cool actor. He's not like the best actor. We like him because he's a cool actor and he's a cool character. He does. Game. He knows his roles and he's good at yeah. those roles. And you've played enough that you know, like the story conceit of you know he's in your head and you're going to die and you need to get figure out what you're going to do um, and how they handle that. I'm like, this is so cool. Um, I don't want to. I just remember the world. But... The world just being like, even when I played it at its most broken form, probably. It just it reminded me much of like Skyrim in the sense like yeah there's clearly bugs in this probably more than Skyrim obviously and it has its issues and yeah I've had things just break and whatever but I'm like I still like loved paying attention to like just this alleyway like like the details yeah. of like it's a gorgeous it game, felt even lived in it felt lived in it yeah. felt lived in you know what yeah. I mean that's to me like yep. what you know and I played as a 
whatever ones was i forget the names of them the one who comes from like the outskirts out, if, if oh oh yeah, yeah yeah or no okay, sh- sorry Outlander. from the streets that's the one i did the it was street. just uh, like city kid street kid uh yeah i, I did, did the street kid around. one because i liked the punky kind of attitude with it but i think next time if i do i'll do it i might do corporate even though i don't not a big like corporate That's an interesting fan, one. but I, I think... haven't seen that intro. I've seen uh, the kind of nomad one, and I've seen the street kid intro, but I haven't found the corporal one. I was like, but you know what? It is kind of cool. I like the maybe I'll. From my understanding is because I, like, oh, I don't want to play someone who like worked in a corporate. But I'm like, but actually, that might be kind of cool because a lot of themes are of fighting corporations, so they could be kind of cool to be like play role play a little bit as like someone who's fed I up will, with. I the will say this: no system. spoilers, no spoilers, but there is a. I know, like, what corpo you're from in that intro, um, which I guess, you know, spoilers, is, like, the main one. Um, w- the best written ending, uh, and it's actually two different endings because there's two different results that you could choose at- during this ending sequence, involves uh, siding with them. The best well-written ones. Um, fantastic. Fantastic. Like it, it's a gut punch and it, it, it's awesome, um, but no more spoilers. Uh, and just lots of the side quests are really well written. Major characters that you would be surprised are introduced in side quests. Some of them very deep in side quests that are so optional. I said in our, in our last episode, my favorite side quest of the game involves crucifying uh, a man on death right. row for like uh, for TV. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fantastic. Um, my number two, uh, best old game I played in 2023, Bloodborne. Hey, this was also the year I went back and I finished Bloodborne and Platinum that as well. Um, by far the best game from software has ever made. The level design is fantastic. The world design is fantastic. The story design is fantastic. Um, the gameplay improvements over Dark Souls, it's a very aggressive game. They realize too many people use shields and just block everything. And this game to nudge people out of that comfort zone, remove the shield and put a gun that had the parry mechanic built in. So you are, you know, rushing towards enemies. I like never used the gun. I was just straight. You will learn du- very quickly. Dual wields like, of the swords. When an enemy lunges at you, you, you shoot with the gun and, and it's good. But uh, every weapon is, is, is a fantastic trick weapon. I used the giant hammer that turns into a sword. Awesome. Um, this is just the best game that they made. I don't know what more to say. It's just the to, best game that they to made. To me, like that opening, even though I haven't finished it and I did still a good chunk. Uh, I remember when like I first got into it, like realistically, like I remember, I think I got farther than you did, like which is surprisingly to me. Um, yeah. At the did. first time. And I just love that. I'm a fucking sucker for the Victorian like era of that, like gothicness, like, if they ever remaster it, I'm pre-ordering it day one. I know oh, I, yeah. I've talked about how I don't play much video games, but like a remaster at 60 FPS, just just so I can play that opening section at least one more time, would be yeah. It's it's a it's a great the bee's knees and like this game more so than even Dark Souls, which is in there, but like more so than Dark Souls has so many optional areas, but also like optional routes. Like, you remember, like, the when you go to Old Yarnum, there's the guy with the minigun that shoots at right. you? Yeah, do you know you can actually go a different way and sneak behind him before he ever even knows you're there, and you can talk to him, and he's friendly? Because you never did enter, know <laughs> because when you when you walk in the, the way most people will, you are an, an intruder and an unwanted person you're told to leave, and you don't, so you are his enemy. But, like, if he never sees you and you can just climb up that ladder and you're right behind him and he's just, like, a cool guy. And you you can do that. There's a lot of just different routes. <laughs> or, like, in the fray of this, you might not even realize there's a ladder here, which <laughs> takes you much, I, I much just like the way. atmosphere. The music Such is just game. sombering and depressing. And then, like, another favorite thing about, like, that first area is just the people in the house is, like, some of them oh, are laughing. Yeah. Some of them are, like, crying. And I'm like this atmospherically this is the most metal game i've played like just yeah so good and just to tell yeah, if the they're whole mad or if they're just ecstatic insane that happy and being or safe whatever or, yeah um and just like the cosmic horror kind of twist that ends up happening is just i don't think i've ever seen a video game by any means um even ones based off hp lovecraft get cosmic horror as much as this game does like it just gets it um yeah i i'm 
I have a feeling we're definitely going to get a rematch. They ha- they fucking have to. They're they're just head- waiting. But when Skip we get it, ahead. it's going to be worth it. Skip ahead two minutes if you don't want uh, leaked spoilers um, of upcoming Sony stuff. In the Insomniac leak, there's a couple slides about um, uh, some of the other Sony-owned studios, including um, uh, Gorilla, how many people worked there, and um, Bluepoint, and how many people worked there. And a lot of people assumed that because they did the Demon Souls remake, they're they're doing Bloodborne. That was even rumored um, by someone that apparently was in the know. Um, this had like a screenshot or two of their next project, and it seems to be an original game. So. Unless there, and only 80 people work there because this was in the slide. It was like, wow, only 80? So I don't know if there's doing two different games because Insomniac's able to do two different games because like 800 people seem to work there, you know? So I don't when, know when if it's When did Bloodborne come out? What year was 2015. it? 2015. We'll save it for 2025, 10-year anniversary. Or maybe it's 2014. I don't know. I think it's 2015. Um, fantastic game. Uh, my number one old game that I played in 2023 that's cheating because all these <laughs> other games are games that I haven't really invested too much in at all until this year. This game I have played and beaten many, many times, but you know what? I had a new excuse to play it again. It's been in a recent collection and it has new trophies. I'm talking Metal Gear Solid 3 Metal Snake Gear, Eater. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would put this in the top five of the greatest video games of all time. It's story is able to go back and forth between being very campy and being just so seriously serious in a way that you would take seriously. You're bo- it's both that, like, it wants to be an American action movie and it wants to try so hard that you that's where the camp comes in because you're like, this is a little silly, and but it's fun. And when that camp then turns into, like, I am crying, like, it's so good. This game is the media literacy test that I would give people that... um that are like, oh, I really like story and video games and blah, blah, blah. Like, I would give play through this game, and I would just want to see what their reaction is. If they know the context of its game, of the place this game takes in the Metal Gear universe, they would know, okay, this guy is Solid Snake's father. This is a prequel game. And we know that, you know, he's Big Boss. This is his name. Uh, his, his, you know, code name or whatever. And he is a bad guy. In fact, Solid Snake has killed him twice. And, like, this is supposed to be leading into why he it became the bad guy he is. A lot of people see the ending and they're like, I don't really think he's, he's a bad guy. I don't understand. What makes him a bad guy at the end? That's my media, liter- media literacy test. Do you not realize? Do you pay attention? You know, what's going on here? Does he, does this char- do you not realize this character sees how his government, which happens to be the United States government, has taken his mentor, friend, mother figure, someone who is the reason the Allies won World War II within the fiction. They literally titled the American Patriot, official title, the, <laughs> the hero of World War II, the mother of special forces in the American military, this sacred figure, why they have sold her for money and used him as a tool to eliminate her so that they can get money and Russia doesn't. And how he knows this at the end and hesitates to shake the president's hand and refuses to shake some cabinet member's hand on his way out. He becomes a bad guy because he cannot trust governments. And that's why in you know his next game, he starts an army that has no government, you know. It does that right. will fight for peace. They're not just like, we're bad guys. But like how he becomes the person he is is very evident to me that pays attention to what the game's story is trying to say. You know what I mean? As opposed to the words that are spoken out loud. That's my media literacy test. That is the number one, obviously, best old game that I played of 2023. I have one more quick list. Because guess what, Devin? I platinum like 60-something games this year. A lot of them are stinky platinums. But 25 of them were real games. Here are the top 10 that I platinumed in 2023. (laughs) <laughs> I'll be quick about this. Number 10, Guilty Gear Strive. I had most of these trophies done in 2021. All I had left was this arcade mode run. There's a super hard boss at the end that you can only get if you're playing arcade on the hardest difficulty. Only way to do the hardest difficulty is to never lose a round. It's a dynamic level like system where you don't pick a difficulty level. It decides what level you're at depending on how well you're doing in arcade mode. Never lose a round. You get to this final boss. Uh, it's just one of the other characters, except he has like 
Uh, ten times the health is normal. Deals three times as much damage. Uh, can do stuff he shouldn't normally be able to do. Uh, and the AI is fucking ridiculous. And I spent like a dozen hours trying. And I beat this fucker. And I didn't even use a complete cheese strat. I used a character that has cheese strat, like, techniques. But I was able to incorporate that into real fighting. And I beat him. And that's number ten on my list. <laughs> number nine. This video game called Ayuden Chronicle Rising. This is actually the number 10 on my top 10 old games list I played in 2023, but it was listed at number 11 because I guess I skipped number 3 somehow. This was a <laughs> game uh, that I thought was another game. This uh, People that left Konami started a Kickstarter for a game that was a spiritual sequel to an old RPG series they made in the PS1 and PS2 era called Suikoden. Heard this was a fantastic series, never played it. Um... And the Kickstarter, cool, 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 cool. And it's called Eden Chronicle. Awesome. Eden Chronicle Rising, awesome. It's on PlayStation Plus, extra premium. I download it, and I go in expecting turn-based combat. I didn't really look into much of this game at all. No, it's a side-scrolling Metroidvania game, and it's not that great. Um, turns out this was like a, uh, a, um, a Kickstarter-like extra goal. <laughs> that they'll make this other game too, and that's what this game was. And the game that I'm thinking oh. I was playing comes out this April. <laughs> so I'll play it eventually. <laughs> um, it's a fun game. Uh, combat is way too easy uh, and too simple. Like, I don't really feel like uh, uh, playing with its systems all that much. It's just easier to mash. Um, it takes place in one town. The story pacing is terrible. The characters are kind of nice, and it's localized in a pretty funny way. Um one of the three playable characters is this man, king. he's a kangaroo, he's a male kangaroo, and, uh, hey, you know how kangaroos have pouches? He has a pouch, except it's not, like, his actual, like, uh, like stomach flap. I don't know if male kangaroos have it or not, just the females do. I also heard it's wet I in think, there, and not fur-lined, which makes I me feel a lot gross. I think males maybe do, but obviously they just can't have the kids. I don't know. I'm not a marsupial anyway, expert. He has a bag of holding fanny pack that is on his stomach and he, it's where he pulls his giant cloud strife sword out of him. Like, all right. Then he talks like an Australian, you know, dude, like he's cool. Anyway, I thought that game would be a nice 20 hour platinum and ended up being 60. Uh, but I did it. Um, cool. Uh, number eight game. I platinumed in 2023 Tekken seven, super easy platinum. I recommend it for everyone. Play through the story mode, play through its weird, like treasure battle survival mode, play a few games online. You're done. It's awesome. Number seven, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VII Reunion. I uh, did this on PS5. I could always do the PS4 version. I will not. Those 300 side missions made this game like 80 hours, and it was redundant as hell. And like I said, they could have... Because it's 14 maps that these take place across of, give or take one or two, I don't know. Um, and they're basically just like hallways with nothing in them except random battle spots, which you can avoid if you if you hug the wall. <laughs> You don't trigger the <laughs> random battles. Some treasure chests, and then, like, an enemy model you can see physically in the world, which is your target boss. And that's it. Do this 300 times. It's annoying as fuck. Um, but I did it. Hey. Number six, a game that uh, would have been in my top ten uh, new games I played if I had played ten games in total. This uh, puzzle indie game called Humanity. Uh, you might have seen it. I um, have PlayStation I've, thing. I think I've heard of this one. Yeah. You are a dog. Uh, you are like uh, play. You are. It's basically like Lemmings back in the day. There is just a flow of people coming out of the spiritual doorway, and you are. It's a tile based game in 3D. So there's up. There's vertical verticality to it, and you're placing commands on tiles to make the humans do things to navigate this environment and get to the goal. Um, there are additional objectives and optional objectives. It was a very fun platinum to do. I did m like. 85% of these puzzles without a guide, which I'm very proud of. And uh, it's just an awesome game with a great soundtrack. The fifth best platinum I did in 2023, Cyberpunk 2077. I did it before the 2.0 patch. Um, it's one of those games where you can do everything in it on one playthrough. Um, and the shitty thing about the trophy list, which technically has changed with 2.0, I think, um, none of the trophies required a certain build in terms of RPG stats, this is great. Except one of them did. And I, of course, didn't build that certain way. So I had to make a second oh. playthrough just for that one trophy. So I had to save one of my ending trophies. So I wanted to make sure one of my ending trophies was the last experience I had with the game and not me grinding just to level up to do this 
one trophy where you die in, but then this mod brings you back to life and you kill the person who killed you within five seconds. That mod requires one of the stats at a certain point. And I had already was level 50. I was maxed out. I couldn't get that stat. You can't respec. Um, oh, that sucks. Yeah, it did. But 2.0 changed the RPG stuff completely, and I don't think there are mod requ- there are stat requirements on mods. I don't think. So it's probably easier to do. But a fanta- it was just it reminded me of Skyrim when I platinumed that back in the day, where I just went everywhere and did everything, and it was fun. Uh, number four, Near Replicant. I like a, and I'm in the minority here, and this will appall some of you. I get it. I like Marty a good appalled. RPG. Already mad. <laughs> I like a good RPG slash action RPG. Kingdom Hearts does this very well, at least in its main three games, of having a item drop list off enemies. And you're going to need to get a lot of these specific drops from these different enemies to craft these things and upgrade these things and to do this and to get that and get that. I love that shit. There are good ways to do it and bad ways to do it. Kingdom Hearts always did it well because there are so many different places that you need to do it in that you're getting not the tedium boredom of the same locale and the same enemies. And if you do, you can go somewhere else and, and grind over here and over there and this and that. Um, this game does that mostly, uh, but there is the robot area, which you spend more than half the time grinding for the same parts. And like a good amount of the parts you need come from there, which sucks. But I actually enjoy this in games. I know that's crazy. I know that's crazy. I know a lot of people see it as a disrespecting their time. I get it. If it's done poorly like Final Fantasy 13 did, because I platinum that game a few years ago, I get it. This game's better than, than doing that. Number three. You could have been you could have been grinding like me. You're grinding the video games. You could have been grinding in the club, okay? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, someone that goes <laughs> to a club in 2023 sounds like that. <laughs> yeah, you could have been grinding in the club. He's going to the smoking <laughs> club that was erected in the 1940s. Um, <laughs> number three and Down number there on two, 12th Avenue. <laughs> number three and number two are very similar. Uh, number three is Dark Souls Remastered, and number two is Bloodborne. That's right, bitches. I platinum both those games. Notoriously hard video games. I platinum them both. I used a guide. And hey, I used the Cump but Dungeon in Bloodborne. But have you platinumed Battletoads? No, there's not on PlayStation. I know you probably just learned about what Battletoads is because... No, I've like, known about it. Um, it's well, I don't even know what the game looks like, but whatever. I'm sure people say it's, it's a shitty. It's a shitty NES platformer that has no. one very hard, like, bullshit level... Which is what makes the game. Well, it hasn't game. met Sonic uh, Superstars yet. With spoilers. <laughs> Talk about that next episode, maybe, or the episode <laughs> after that, or if it's in your list, then maybe I don't know. But um, uh, I did use the Cum Dungeon in Bloodborne. If you know, you know. It's a procedurally generated level based on a seed that has C U M as the first three letters in its seed title, um, <laughs> where you walk forward a bit and a guy off screen dies and you get a bunch of experience points and you can just do this over and over. I use that in Bloodborne and yes, in Dark Souls Remastered, I did use the item duplication glitch to duplicate those items that give you extra souls, experience points and I became like level 200 something off of doing that. Yeah. However, that does not make the game that much easier. It still requires you to... It still requires... It still requires the confidence of enemy knowledge, game and combat knowledge. It. I don't feel like I was jipping the experience that much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did. It was. These are the type of the games that I know you agree because we spoke off camera and in text messages about this. No. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't agree anymore. Um, it's <laughs> these types of games. I feel completely fine using a guide on how where to find like optional stuff and this and that. Excuse me. But yes, I platinum both of those games. That's my number three and number two. Now, Devin, my number one, I want you to guess. But the Sonic number Frontiers. One... <laughs> no. Uh, I platinumed <laughs> that last year, bitch. What my number one game I platinumed in 2023 was. Can you guess? You've watched me play this game. Twice. It's not Dino Crisis, because you're not good enough. Um... Game I platinumed. Twice. A PlayStation 5 and a this? PlayStation 4 version. Devin, I did this a year ago in February. Oh, that's I don't remember. Or Babylon's yeah, Fall. The, oh, the yeah. Platinum the, developed Square Enix produced. Right before uh, it went offline on my birthday. Games as a service. Yep. 
uh, didn't make it a full year. It uh, it, it died in uh, February of twenty. Well, its parents left it to die. You know what yes. I mean? Oh, the, the I parents left it. Hundred <laughs> percent. And no one wanted to play with it, which is one of the reasons why. None it just of kids. died in the street. Yeah. <laughs> Got Man, ran over by a bunch of cars. What an experience. <laughs> I recommend to people out there, like, not this game, but, like, if you ever, like, oh, man, there's this PlayStation 3 game or Xbox 360 game that I've always wanted to platinum, get all the achievements in. The servers are going offline. You won't be able to do it. It's – if you go in with a plan and you give yourself a month, it's kind of fun to be, like, I'm going to do it. And then you're one of the very last people to do it. That's pretty cool. Um it wasn't. A, it was a fun experience using a guide, being like, "What is the most efficient way to do this?" And I did it for both PS5 and PS4 because your save file transferred backwards, which is very rare. For it's usually like your PS4 save can go to the PS5 version, not the other way around. But because this was a live service game, your save was a part of an account, and I just logged into the account. I bought off eBay a sealed copy of the PS4 version with like a week left. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it arrived within a week left of, of the service being alive for $10. And basically a tip like for the a day developers, or two, I guess. <laughs> well, this was off eBay. They didn't get that money. Oh, um, uh, never mind. Um, it was sealed, though, which I was thankful for. Yeah, man. Uh, I could see where they were going with that game. The combat was interesting and in how you're using four different shoulder buttons to make different attacks happen or whatever. Um, it was ugly as sin, and it was a boring overall game, and, and I never played it in multiplayer. Yeah. They they left it to die. I played it with multiplayer a little bit because there was some mandatory stuff. Uh, but yes, that was my top ten games. I platinumed in twenty twenty three. Man, Devin, I wish we could talk about the stuff you did. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I know. Yeah, so I, I went on, but I did a lot this year. This was one of my most productive years with video games. No, no and movies. Had, you weren't. Uh, it wasn't productive. You failed. I watched a lot Not of movies. One movie for the show. Doesn't in terms count. of new movies, I didn't watch any Doesn't new movies count. this year. It's okay. Yeah, I think one of the things this year is going to be we both have to just do a little bit more. <laughs> at least on the opposite spectrum. Because we're like yin and yang in this in Sonic movie show. I'm more of the movies. You're more of the video games. We have to we have to merge a little bit. I don't know what that is. There's a term for that. But my goal is to play more video games this year. Uh, and what is the term? I want you to see like th- at least three movies. <laughs> that is a <laughs> okay, true show. Okay, fine. I'll see three movies. It, new movies. movies. <laughs> well, uh, the theater that's opening up in that dead space in the mall, I think, happens. Uh, hey, maybe as a spoiler for one of the games you played. I didn't. Um, I didn't hear. I heard that it was shut down, but I didn't know when it was like that. Like when it officially. That was a under. while ago. It was a couple, like a year or so ago. But this other mm-hmm. place is moving in, and I think in like April. So hey, I'll be able to go to a theater that's close. You know what? If I have time, because I'm supposed to be up there in May. If I have time, maybe we can go see nice. some random movie. In the new one, we can see if what they've done, if they've done any differences. Okay. That's right. See if they That's right. upgraded it, maybe added a pool or something. Um, <laughs> that'd be cool. Yeah, maybe they did. Uh, before I go, I need um, to go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, okay. I've realized I really have to use the jump show. cut. <laughs> There's Orlando Bloom is behind him, like a guardian angel. I didn't even like where Blaine Orlando Bloom in those Pirates movies. I think that's what the standee is supposed to be. I don't even like it. I don't, I don't remember much. I think I was a kid, though. Well, I know I was a kid. But, like, was I a cognizant kid of, like, just out, you know, movies and stories? Or was I just consuming because I was a child? I don't remember. Johnny Depp was also in this movie. You can't really see on the left hand side of his screen he's got this like like red like claw sticking out it is a it's like a lobster claw and it's on a like neon green skeleton hanging uh that has a hat on that says cs go it's a counter-strike global offensive hat like baseball cap and then like around its neck is christmas tree like lights and then stuck up the stomach is a circle sign that says goat all right he's back don't tell don't 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 tell him what don't i told talk you shit. about all right. Don't, don't talk shit. Hit me. All right. Um, so kind of Ethan hinted at the top here. I watched a lot more movies this year. Uh, definitely a down year for video games for me. Um, 
I guess in the sense that I didn't play a variety. I still played games, but just like of what I was playing wasn't really new. Um, I think I'll start with video games first, just because it's the shortest. Okay. Um, in terms of new stuff, uh, Dead Space. I didn't beat it yet, but I have a good chunk in it, and it is. You mean you didn't beat it? The game? Why is it on your list? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's and it's a remaster of a game of the original that which I did beat. Uh, long long time ago and yeah all the moments are there it's just remastered and done well atmosphere is good um probably would have played more of it if i it's one of those games i need to play in total darkness for full effect i can't play mm. like to me playing this when there's sun outside just it's like any horror movie like if you don't yeah yeah yeah, yeah. if you're not diving into the atmosphere it's not gonna reward you or it's not going to be as scary or also you just might not be able to see anything because it might be fucking glary um yeah so and this i played it mostly during the summer when the sun didn't go down till 9 30 at night and i can only play for like now's an the hour perfect after. time <laughs> i know i that's what i'm thinking once it's I, getting brighter uh, get through... every day devin you're, you're, you're <laughs> four seconds that's what, that's what i'm um i'm planning to do after i think i beat god of war valhalla the dlc which mm. i'm counting as a separate thing because it is basically a separate thing um yeah. i did beat god of war ragnarok earlier in like january of this past year uh really loved it um and then i took a break from it and then i actually with valhalla coming out I actually went back and finished some little things to a point where I felt satisfied enough to jump into the Valhalla because it's definitely it's a continuation and of the you're story. You're getting used to the combat again before you hop into yeah, um, a very combat heavy DLC. And this I, one, I can't believe this is free, and I respect that it's free because I think more shit should be free, uh, especially if you're just trying to reward fans in a way. Um, this rewards the the OG fans. I mean, like before 2018 reboot. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. Yeah, it has. It talks about, without getting to spoilers, like Kratos' past, you know, games, basically. And there's this shit in the game uh, that I'm just like, I was not expecting to, like, for this to be in a, in a DLC and not, like, put in the, you know, full, you know, $60, $70 actual part of the game. To have this just be like, hey, we added this to the game for the fans and put time into it is just great. There's callbacks to the original games whether it's weapons or uh, story elements or characters that I was like, oh shit, you're bringing this back? Do you think or... it's like a uh, they're tying up loose ends? Because I, I know that there's going to be another God of War game because like it right. makes money. Do you think it's tying know. up loose ends so that far they can move yet. forward easily? I feel like, I feel like it's, it's trying to like wrap up in terms of Kratos' character of like, maybe not loose ends, but just like, Hey, we really wanted to like nail down this like. I already think the first game did this, where it's kind of talking about um, how Kratos did was an asshole, evil person uh, in the other games, and how he's trying to like not be that anymore, and you know raise his kid to not be like him and not make the same mistakes as he did. Um, and I feel like this is more on a s singular front where he's not talking to atreus in this scenario he's talking to himself and confronting his demons even further um but in terms of gameplay uh you know we talked about hades earlier being one of our favorite games um definitely inspired by hades it's a roguelite in the sense but it's in the sense you're going through each room and you pick different things from a chest and you have options and it rewards you and the game supposedly i haven't played enough of it yet i played maybe three or four hours of it um supposedly it tells you that it will balance itself out to force you to play different mechanics that you don't normally play so i think it's actually going to help me because some of the extra stuff i haven't finished in ragnarok are a i can't beat this side boss yet either because of mm. equipment or skill <laughs> or maybe i need yeah. to like play around with rpg elements of it more like i need to change out my builds maybe um but this is kind of forcing me to go straight because it's bare bones you don't you know you go back to basics and it's like okay you unlock this right. power up again oh you're using the axe too much okay we're gonna force you to give you only power ups for this weapon mm, okay. um 
But there's also story elements of it, of callbacks to the original game. He goes in, literally, like, there's flashbacks to the original games. And it's just like, fuck yeah, we're back, boys. Um, and there's cool, like... Maybe a spoiler for effect uh, question here. When it does the flashbacks, huh. is it showing old footage or is it recreation? Recreated. Oh, okay. But it looks... it, And then some of the music is from the original games. It's, like, redone, remixed by... Bear McCurry there, who's done all the games and done a lot of other shit. I love his work a lot. But, yeah, I was getting, like, definitely the nostalgia goosebumps uh, from certain parts of it that uh, once I beat it, maybe I'll, I'll share more But to get my full thoughts on it. But, yeah, I'm liking the four or five hours and I'm playing of it. And as a God of War fan, this really feels like a nod to that. But also, like, it's just more combat content as we said we're not supposed to use that word uh combat combat uh uh uh, experiences and it forces you to learn the game in new ways and maybe that'll help you finish out some of the other stuff um my other game top game i probably is not surprised and i don't know if it's kind of cheating because it's kind of like overwatch situation but come on counter-strike 2 all right is here been waiting all summer for it and we got it and i called it I called it on my stream when they're like, oh, it'll be here this summer. That means like August. I'm like, no, it's going to be fucking late September, the last possible day. It's going to be the day before summer ends because that's how all these game developers work because mm-hmm. they say summer in case they're like, hey, actually, we're not going to meet that deadline of July we wanted to hit. Yeah. You know, but the way it was there, I'm really bummed that I was having housing issues when CSGO was having its last night because it was literally on a Friday when we normally play if I remember correctly, or on Wednesday, maybe, uh, whatever, doesn't matter. I wanted to play it as the servers went down because I thought it had been really fun. And I was, I had 1,496 hours in Counter in Counter Strike CS:GO. Oh, so you and didn't I'm like, hit fuck. 1500. I was like, oh, my last three hours, I'll make, I'll make it. Uh, the, the last, you know, part of the last time you could play the game in that way. Because to be clear to the and, audience here. Counter-Strike 2 is like Overwatch 2 in the sense that it is an update, the title update, to the previous game. It's not a new game. It's not a new skew. It's an, a massive overhaul of the game. With yeah, a it's a massive title, overhaul is the best way to describe identity. it. I know I shouldn't count it as separate, but it is separate because they made so many quality of life improvements that one of the biggest ones I could think off the top of my head here, and I didn't, I didn't write notes for myself, so apologies, um, but is like be able to refund shit. There's been so many times I'm just like, because I had a muscle memory and then, and it's not perfect every time. It's you like, buy guns at the beginning of each round and sometimes right. you buy armor. Accident. What my, my thing was, it was always armor, then if I remember correctly, armor, then diffuse kit. Uh, diffuse kit. If I was on CT, gun, blah, blah, blah. And I just had it down. And like, I know some people I'm, who I played with would have like scripts they would use. And I'm like, nah, I just, I got it in my fucking head, dude. Um, but once in a while I would mess it up and I'm like, oh shit, I didn't mean to buy an AK. I've been sucking ass with the AK. Let me, I can't refund it. Well, does anyone else want, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. Who, who wants this? Who wants yeah, this gun? yeah. So, or a oh, fuck. I bought a shotgun or I bought armor because we're supposed to be saving. Like if we were doing a save round, like, oh, I didn't hear that. And now I just bought and now I'm screwed if we lose, um, for the next three rounds. Uh, my main the issue I do have with the game, are cool too. smoke effects there. are different. The Molly's. I think look nicer and just. I think the reduction ha- in rounds changes the flow in terms of the economy on what you're buying and when. Yeah. Uh, to a may- way to that I can just even I didn't play too much of Counter Strike Two with you guys, but um, my impression is that it is a tighter game overall now. It doesn't feel like there are stretches of the same type of round over and over again. Right. Like Counter Strike. Even Two. though I I will say I don't know if it's because how we play the game, but I actually still don't know if i like it being because it used to be 16 rounds so best of 30 um and now it went down to to, tie with the potential to tie um and now they've switched it to there's different modes now there's premiere mode which is you vote which is like face it i think they just wanted everything to be in game instead of a third party so they basically made their own face it mode then they have still regular competitive i still prefer competitive because i can pick the maps i want to play um, and not have to worry about like fuck. I just played Dust Two, and now we got to play Dust Two again. Um, and what I was gonna say is that 
they shortened it from 16 to win. They shortened it to 13. And the games just feel still to me a little bit too quick, especially if you're dominating. Hmm. Um, and I get like that might save time actually. Cause then you're like, okay, it's three less rounds. I got to go through this bullshit. Or if you have a shitty team, if you're playing with randos and they suck ass, that's three less rounds. You got to deal with them. So I get it. And what you said, like, I feel like actually because it's shorter, you have to be more aggressive. There's less save rounds. Uh, or when you save round, you got to save. You can't have half buys on teams. Yeah, you yeah, will yeah, get yeah. punished for that. You could get away with it maybe in the previous game. So I get with what you're saying with it being tighter. I think so. But I, there's something with it being 16, it feels like a full-fledged experience for me in the sense that um, and, and like, the best way I can compare this is to like sports, right? Like I think you can make the game quicker, but like to me it's like, it's like football is played for 60 minutes. That's like, to me, like if you got rid of a quarter of football, I'd be like, no, like you're, it's an ebb and flow. There's going to be a quarter where you might suck. But then if it's how you finish the game, there's been plenty of games that we've played. We've played, we have an Excel sheet for fun of like keeping track of our wins and losses. We played over 420 something games or whatever, or how many rounds, you know, and there's been games where we were down by 12 and we came back and beat them. And vice versa, you know? And I like that ebb and flow. It's like basketball, a like compared to another sport. Basketball in the sense that there's teams that don't play well in the second and third, but they fit, they started well, and they came back and started shooting really well in the fourth. Counter-Strike rewards you for teamwork. If you have a good... Like, we've we've literally played, and I'm not even... This ain't me just saying this, you know, to make ourselves feel good. Because uh, in Counter-Strike and uh, CSGO, towards the end... We started because the matchmaking was busted or something, or we were in a weird uh, elo. We literally did play people who are like either uh, master guardian, like in not master, uh, no, yeah, master, master guardians in, in in global elites, like the top two ranks. We played an office match against global elites once because the fucking thing broke, and we still hung like I think three or four rounds on them, like. And we played hard every round, and we were, we, yeah, we got beat all right, 16 to 4, but like some of those rounds were closer than, like, you know, like, so, and that game, it's because we reward, it rewards teamwork. And I feel like at least with these new features, having less rounds kind of sucks. So for me, I'm like, I kind of want those three extra rounds where, like, because there's been games we've lost now where we're like, oh, we had momentum at the end. We just lost. Yeah. one of the last five rounds. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I know for a fact we would have beat this team in the past. We've beaten teams like this where they got to 13 and we were at like eight and we've come back to win 16, 14. Yeah. They had that one round, but we won the save rounds. We won the pistol rounds. We won. We had big clutches from these teammates. So that's kind of where I'm like, ah, man, I, I, I get why they make it 13. We do get through a lot more games now. Like we were almost, we can actually play every map at least once before like five hours. So like, that's cool. But man, I kind of like the, yeah, this, this match is going to take an hour and 15 minutes and it's going to take a lot of like mental, like be in the zone and like, let's, let's play hard. And yeah, I mean, we, until it hits 16, we have a shot, but now I'm like 13 leaves less room for error. And I feel like in a game where there's some parody, more time creates more chances for crazy shit like to happen. One of the sweatiest multiplayer shooters out there. Everyone tries so fucking hard. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> yeah, we goof those rounds where we goof around. But, is. Um, but uh, I will say, too, the map changes is mostly a graphical thing, but even that type of change makes certain elements more pronounced than they were before. Not that anything mechanically might have changed, but like. Hey, everyone knows it's like just this this um this uh this verbal like taught practice of uh this spot is what people do here and this and that and just the graphical changes kind of point that out more. Um where it's Well like, they got yes. rid of skyboxes, that's the huge change on all maps. So now you can chuck nades across maps, which I I haven't used too much besides like I love kind of like the map I made where I just made the skybox really tall. And you <laughs> so you were ahead them. of your time. Yeah. I uh, was. Well, no, like I I always throw a decoy every round, most rounds, because I just a habit of buying it and I just like chucking it because it's just a, st- a stupid like gimmick that I do. 
And I'm like, now I have no skybox. I know this shit is going near their spawn just to be annoying. Like, it's just, okay, every round this decoy comes flying in in our general vicinity or is sitting on top of a wall somewhere. And it's just yeah. maybe enough. I don't know. I can't prove it with any data, but maybe there's one round at some point that might have affected. You know what I mean? It might have been like, oh, wait, no, they're not capped. That's the fucking decoy they throw every round. You know, something like that. Um, but they added shadows to the, to, which is right. awesome. That's my player shadows. Player shadow, so like that's helped me a ton as someone who isn't going to Metal Gear most Solid Two uh, uh, thing where you can see the guard shadow coming, you know what I mean? Because I'm very shadow. much a quiet player. I try to like walk a lot and be sneaky because I'm not going to out aim most people. But I can out smart people or try to like do weird, come from weird directions and weird angles. And being able to see people's shadows is just so rewarding because it's like that, that's I think I heard them the now. I see them because. There are certain, you know, doorways, exits, corners, etc., that have a different, you know, uh, knowledge balance between who's on what side at what point. Because, like, you could see someone coming before you would normally. You can get ready, you know what I mean, to shoot the head because you know it's literally coming now. Um, right. Before, yeah. Yeah, it just... I think they did a lot of quality of life balances. And like I said, my biggest gripe is the round changes, but... I maybe that's the trade off or maybe it will I, be I, shown to that you were right and excuse me that it was a uh, maybe who knows they might change it nothing yeah. set in stone but I, I'm just I, happy that I we got this I still feel like though, it's called then... Counter Strike 2 and I don't know why because it's like the fourth Counter Strike game <laughs> yeah I think it's what it was Counter Strike Counter Strike Source it was Counter Strike but then really Counter Strike 1.6 is both different but the same that's what people would consider original Counter Strike. Then yeah, Source, um, Condition Zero, uh, Global Offensive, and now Two, which is technically yeah. still Global Offensive, but like it's not. at the very. And I'll say this one last point on it is it's super cool to think about it this way. Where I got into Counter Strike around 2015, 2016 because I watched some Twitch streamers I follow who used to play Counter Strike Source, and like that's when CS:GO started to become really popular because the game was starting to get fleshed out with updates at the time and they were like playing and I'm like, man, this game looks so competitive. And as I like to play competitive games and it's cheap, with my dude, friends which was and it's cheap at the time it was $15. Yeah. yeah. And I'm watching everyone play it and they're like, yeah, this, you know, then I watched like old counter-strike. I'm like, man, you know, that's crazy. So I, I jumped in around that time, but now I'm that person for like the new people. Not that I'm good as good as them, but just like, there's gonna there's gonna be people yeah. who this is their first Counter Strike and they're not gonna know what CS:GO is like, like yeah. just like I don't know how CS Source they can't was play or CS 1.6 was. I will say there's know. one way to play Counter Strike Global Offensive Counter Strike Go and that's on a PlayStation Three because I had it's a, it was a <laughs> digital game I platinum that that was my which has like half the platinum doesn't have half the guns in it well, and everything I mean, that's crazy it's it a was, relic it like got like the first balance update ever. Because it came out in 2012. That's when CSGO came out. Right. And this, I think this version got, like, the first balance update, and that was it. Yeah. But you can plug a keyboard and mouse and play it that way, which is cheating. But like you said, it, like but, basically it took almost 11 years to get a, this huge update. So that's, like, that's cool. That means maybe this game will be out for another 10 years, and there will be another generation after this. And, like, I don't know. It's just cool to see a game with this big of an audience as toxic as it may be, uh, <laughs> continue. Um, at least we don't try to preach toxicity unless they talk shit first. Um, also, saying CS2 is very similar to saying CSGO. I, don't I still have a habit of saying CSGO because it just sounds cooler to me than CS2. Also, but... Global Offensive is such a modern warfare ripoff style. <laughs> Oh yeah, title. <laughs> it's like Medal of Honor Warfighter, and and you know, I don't know. They honestly could have just rebranded it back to Counter Strike, and it probably would have been okay. But I get why they wanted to probably differentiate hey, instead of Counter Strike Three, call it the Counter Strike. I always say, I said it multiple times. They should have done Counter Strike Resource and make it like a post like post like climate, very bad climate. Well, I guess it's happening now. But you know what I mean? Just like maybe apocalypse isn't the best way but close to that where it's like people are fighting over resources instead of terrorists versus counter terrorists you have like the government versus just people trying to survive over like fighting over instead of planting a bomb you'd i don't know have to 
spread blow a virus. up an oil field or some yeah spread a virus into a computer That's instead or of condition like zero would be patient zero and you yeah. are trying to get someone to infect a city there you go here's your yeah, there's but like i always thought that'd been a fun thing but no yeah i can't i'm excited for cs2 it's rejuvenated me because we we just got to 100 wins was like kind of our fun gimmick way of like playing like we need to get to 100 wins for 100 losses and it was like it took a whole year to do it it really started during the pandemic where we were able to play a lot more um folks are getting older and we're all getting jobs and life stuff but we're still been able to play most friday nights or on another night and it's just really fun then we've had you come on too as well and it's just been fun to have like sometimes it feel it really feels like me and the boys equivalent of like after work we're going to the bar kind of thing where it's like no matter what, I'm like, that's something I can look forward to. It's like, and we have a new game in a way to kind of, not in a way, a new game to help kind of just rejuvenate it yeah. even more. Not that it was ever going away, but you know what I mean? Where it's just like, oh, fuck, now we got a new game right at the right time to like, let's try to do our 100 win challenge again. And so we're starting that yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, start over. So. Um, now, I saw, I'm, I'm really glad that, you know, like you're, you're playing Counter-Strike and you're enjoying it. Um, <laughs> I do have an ask, though. That mm-hmm. uh, 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 whether or not you put that game on pause is up to you, but you know, time wise, maybe put an addition. You play some Apex Legends with me because they added Final Fantasy stuff in there, and I just want to get that stuff. I, I heard people are pissed. Years. I don't people care if they're pissed. pissed. I want. They it. say it sucks now, like not. In, oh, the like, game in actually. General? Yeah, really? a lot of people. I've been because I've been in the Apex Legends subreddit for since the game. You're came also out. in the Overwatch subreddit, right? <laughs> Yeah, I just it's fun to like just see what people are talking about and like cuz I guess they changed teams, well they cut a bunch of people who did Apex Legends, laid off a bunch of people. And I guess it's just it feels very like we're just doing this because it's one of our kind of successful games, live service games and it's now just Well, I yeah. I haven't so played it. Be, people since say all the characters seven. suck, all the new characters suck and it just feels feels that it's filled with hackers and stuff now, so I don't know, maybe oh. one day, but I'm gonna go back uh, and and uh, I can play it on see Steam how now. <laughs> Twenty new characters that. <laughs> well, I'm just. I, I hey, my boy was always Revenant. That's when we started season four. When he came in, I'm like, this is my guy. That's and, where everyone uh, says it started to fall off. So I guess we we ended at a good time. Oh, fall off at season seven when we when we stopped. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then there we go. So, I don't know what season they're on now, but uh. I don't know. Yeah. That's what people are saying. I remember that number. Yeah, uh, CS2, blah, blah, blah. in terms of old games, uh, finally finished Stray. Mm. Uh, that, I think I talked about that last time game. we did an episode. The kitty game. Fun little cute game. A lot shorter than I thought it was, so I was like, oh, okay, cool. I platinum Astro's Playroom when I was waiting to pick up <laughs> Bryn from the airport, and I'm like, I have an okay. hour, and I'm like, I don't really want to start anything. So I was like, let me, oh, yeah, I think I have like one little thing to do I left in Astro's Playroom. I didn't know you that game. You didn't tell me that. Yeah, oh. so I just went ahead and done that. Uh, and then we played a lot of Rust this year, so shout out to Rust. That's it was kind r- of a I, oh man, I forgot about that. That should have been on my list. Yeah, a revisit. Me? We played at least for me. I think I did like thirty or forty hours. I was unemployed uh, I at I, the time, so I tripled that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but I it was good to kind of like. Day. It definitely is unfortunately a grind game still, where if you're yeah. not on, you, you get need the time and. It, it is in as 28 year olds turning on 29 it's just really tough to be like if you had like 10 people in the your only, group then i think really it'd be a lot easier people but that can play all the time are children because they have that time you know yeah and a lot of people we did who were in that server we played on were definitely under the age of 23 at best um but yeah we played with david friend of the show uh we met, we met a lot a, of fun a kid that was uh, like 14 or whatever yeah uh, he'll always be in in the history of uh of uh, there's so much stuff we, we could spend hours yeah. here of all the 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 our, basically we create our own story and lore out of everything because it's just it's yeah. so unique to each that's how these games work just one moment just to, to cap off like the best moment honestly yeah. the moment i feel like yes like we built this giant base that was my design that i was very proud that we did my design you know and we we did it to the ex- the fullest extent and, and blah 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 and all that stuff and the, the adventures we had but the one moment that i see like is still the best moment maybe you remember this maybe you, you definitely would remember it when i'm telling you this but like maybe you'll feel you regard it as high as as my the last day that we played together, it just happened to be the last day that we played together because we got raided overnight. 
you know, and then someone were like, all right, right well, we are stopping now <laughs> because yeah. what do we do? Our base got well, taken over, and I watched that. And you came in at a time, and so did Dave, and it was very sad. But that night before, while we were playing, we were doing one of our resource runs. We need to upkeep this base. We need lots of ore. And so we need to go Just far away him. to do it, right? <laughs> and it was a, it's a fun experience to do that. We did, once we learned, wait, you know, because we knew the base had a high upkeep cost. That was the downside of the base design is it required a lot of upkeep. I don't think we'd ever be able to do that type of base again. Um, as awesome as it is, because that was an awesome base, regardless. But once we learned, like, hey, wait, w- there's a lot of ore here that spawns. No one really lives out here. And the few people that do traverse, if we pay attention, we can outshoot them if we're prepared. So we were getting a shit ton of stuff and coming back. It was an awesome feeling. And we're taking these um, little fishing boats out there, little just like back motor boats. You know, you you, the, you just got the yoke, I think it's yeah. called, that you're the stick in the back and Oh God, I almost looked wrong. Something you would use in a bayou, for yeah, sure. and a lake or whatever. Yeah, and um, uh, you know, we're go- we're taking up and down because we lived on the coast. We go up far away from the coast, so no one sees us. We're despawned from their field of view, unless they just happen to be scoped out. Anyway, we were doing that back and forth. At one point, we found a better boat. Wow, this boat could fit more people. That's interesting. Oh, it goes faster. Oh, this boat's awesome. It couldn't fit in our dock that we built on an addition to the boat, but, like, that sucks. But, like, now we know it exists. That's awesome. And I'm not talking about the tugboats. We played just before the tugboats got introduced. I played during that update, too. Tugboats are weird, by the way. They're, like, a mobile base. Mm. Um, anyway, we get this one, and I'm the driver because I'm not that great of a shooter on mouse and keyboard because I don't play Counter-Strike every week as, as or as often as you do. Um, so I'm the driver. You and David are shooting. And, uh, um... We're like, we're going through, we're on our way back. This ended up, I think, being the final resource run of the night. And uh, I'm like thinking like, I mean, like this boat's faster. Like, does it have a jump? Jump in the <laughs> game is space bar. I forget space bar is dismount. And so I press yeah. space bar <laughs> and I'm just out of the vehicle, which is still going because it's not just and an immediate flying. stop. And then the two of you guys freak out. They're not sure. You both accidentally press space. And now we're in the ocean. Our boat is just sailing away. Circling. It circles and it around seems the like it's, it's going further and further. We're freezing I, the... to death in the cold water. So we're frantically swimming there. We make oh it all back. God. It was an, a hilarious moment. I know you were a little pissed at that point. Um, I was like, this is <laughs> Because I was hilarious. like, fuck, dude. I was mad for the first, like, 30 seconds. Because I was like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? It was an like, accident. What the fuck are we t- but uh, <laughs> it was awesome. And, I was like, like, we just we spent like forty five minutes grinding all this shit. We're about to lose all of it. To, and for the last of the night, I kind of just went to bed. <laughs> like, I'd that, rather that lose it that logic. way than lose it to some fucko shooting us from behind unannounced. No, I, I think for it, me, that's is, my number one moment of of that whole time we played this year. I think one of my favorite moments was when uh, w- that base was getting raided. So we just started playing the Sonic movie show over your speak over <laughs> your voice. Right. So we had, they were like forced to listen to an episode, and it was our episode about ranking each uh i think it was ranking every sonic design i think it was that oh episode. Um, right. <laughs> but no i think my favorite part about rust is more just building the base with you all i hate being raided it is fun to raid but i hate being raided more um so that's why i'm like i just it's become defeated. a order i'm just like just get everything just, just yeah make yeah. the biggest base it it, I don't think it still compares to the 2013 days because I think we just spent more time and we made. We played fucking... in 2014. We didn't play in 2014. 2014. I looked at my Steam thing recently and we started in 2014. Oh, um, but we made like just the biggest monster that no one saw, unfortunately, really. Uh, yeah. But so it, it isn't as close as that. But I just from like for me, it's just like knowing I have the power. Do you know how to use it? Really, not well, <laughs> uh, but. We have it. Like, that was what I liked yeah, about it. I still like the stuff. signs and being able to customize it. Like, that's what I found fun was, like, I made a, a sign about David uh, and how he's scary and you should watch out for him. Like, <laughs> like that was, yeah, like, I swear more... the general. And then, like, people would see that because it was outside. I mean, it's like, beware the general shoot on sight. Which is, he's one of us. <laughs> this, is our, this is David. I you just know? like the idea. They're like, oh, <laughs> that one side sold me. I better pop him. Uh but hey, I feel like we did a lot better than I thought we were gonna because I thought we were gonna get our asses handed to us. But we we, oh we killed. God. And co- then just co- like we met people. this kid in Vega, 
And my username at the time was named Spotify uh, Premium 30 Day Trial, which is funny. <laughs> I found that funny. Now my it's name good. is the General Son Ralph because <laughs> David's had the general for a decade. Um, yeah. With a picture I made for him a decade ago, but uh, yeah, just this I would be alone because you guys had jobs and I was unemployed at the time, and so I'm playing and it's late at night because I had nothing else to do, and I'm inside our base and just hearing sh- 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 Spotify, Spotify. Yeah, the, ki- the kid's such a I'm goober. Like, <laughs> I'm like he was just funny. It would be like people would be raiding nearby and he's talking in voice chat that other people could hear if they're nearby, and he's like <laughs> telling me the dirt. I'm he like, always, don't say and he my always name. Begged for help and stuff yeah, too. And and it's just, just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was funny. But like, it, that's part of Rust, though, right? Mad, you, but then, like, you learn, you know, I forgive so quickly. You learn, you learn your community and like who are enemies. And I, my, I still one of my favorite thing to do is just, is to make up shit in chat that isn't, you know, because everyone's always being racist and shit. And I'm like, yeah. you know, I'm just gonna make this funny and, and be like, yo, did you guys see that Ninja was on? Just like stupid shit like yeah, that, yeah, like, yeah. or or I kept I doing the bit animals. of like. <laughs> I can't find any animal. I would write that every like yeah. couple hours. I'm like I've been playing this game for three days and I have not seen any animals. And I think I only got one person uh, to finally take bait. Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, and then I would just say a random spot, just hoping that they would come find me and then just waste their time. Like I, because <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I hated that I would waste my time getting resources. I'm like, if I can't kill these people, I'm gonna make them wander <laughs> endlessly for me and they don't exist. Or like the one guy would be like. Yo, meet me here. I'm like, okay, bet. I'll be there. And then we just... Like, where'd ever... you go? Where are you at? And I'm like... <laughs> yeah, no, like, the messing with people is the best part. If we ever do go back in, for the amount of time that we did this year in the future, I have another base design that's much smaller <laughs> that is, mm-hmm. uh, I think, is not as, obviously, as best defended as that, but, like, I think a good compromise where, like, um, there'd be, like, three sets of garage double doors on a triangle so like this it's like this would be a garage door this would right. be a garage door that go up due to sensors that are placed in our like yard because it'd be circled in with high walls and so if someone pops in on those like the doors would go up and there would be the auto turret there you know what i mean and if we stay on the same server we have the same blueprints we got because that's the kind of sucky part is you have to earn the ability yeah, to make I don't the like cool that. shit I think you should be and able to make anything. And it doesn't reset from the, over from... on, like, the, every time the... There's a monthly wipe in the game, but your blueprints don't wipe on official servers. So, like, we spent a lot of time just getting to the point where we could do cool shit, and then we left because we got raided. But, like, if we started a new base now on that server, we could get to the cooler shit much quicker. We could get to auto yeah. turrets with AKs. I think there's some balance you know? issues, at least for people like us. Who, they need to find... I guess they don't need to, because I'm they've been making it without us for however long now. Um, but I feel like there's gotta be a way to like balance it to where like, Hey, we can't play every freaking night for five hours. Like I bet there are modded servers that make yeah. it easier, but then like then ever, you know, it's the thing because if you also play really on easy, a smaller so maps, fun. I kind of want to see what these, like, I love the idea of there being like, just, yeah, there's no one near us and that makes me feel better, but it makes it more fun to go find a base and, yeah, and knowing as opposed that, to like, looking outside and seeing seven near near your yeah. house. Yeah, that's what I liked about our original one in 2014 uh, is that we were on a hill. Professor that no one, Richard. Professor Richard, as it was called. Uh, you couldn't go up. Unless you went up top there, it wouldn't spawn in. <laughs> so like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it was huge. It you still was like hill. 12 stories. We were in like the mountains. Like no one was ever But it was a there. plateaued, and we called it Eden yeah. because it just was like a perfect mm-hmm. utopia location uh, for – this base but so yeah i would love to see i like that the map changes every time it wipes i do wish the wipes weren't as often though like every month i think it's a little brutal i think every three months would be keep me more interested to be like why should i grind for three weeks for it to be gone in a week you know what i mean like i want to be able to like live in it more because by the time we finished it, the I feel only like way we only to live in it it like, is to not have a job and me that's the only thing because like i <laughs> right. felt lived in that because I, that's all I did every day. <laughs> I feel like it was like I still like finally unlocked all the doors in our place by the time by the time we got raided. Get a lot of um, our map was a giant cube that was like multiple layers of filler, <laughs> including the yeah. bottom entire layer, which is like the good definitely inspired from our original designs, where we had like one floor that was just boxes with nothing in them. Yeah, 
And one floor that was a fake loot room. Because walking on them made the same sound as walking on grass. So the idea is someone outside trying to raid us, we could pretend that there's some... I don't know. It was just an awesome... Also, it's just that we had endless spawns. Like, we would just never... Because that was before they had a spawn limit. So you can just... Well, I have 500 sleeping bags (laughs) that I can spawn into. Just sitting there. Uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. Just to make them waste bullets because we could just come back endlessly. Um... But yeah, I don't know. Rust is definitely one of my favorite games of all time because of its memories. I think it just... I, even if we don't play it again, if it takes another 10 years, it'll be kind of funny because it feels like a once, hey, me and the boys are back when like 10 years, five years later, whatever time frame yeah. it is. I don't know, it's like one of those games where year, I, I like to revisit. I like to yeah. play a week this year just to be like, all right, can we commit to a nightly thing this week and just, you know, right. just see what we do. But um, yeah, we can't... Do like a, I, virtual sleepover we just stay up for love three days for us to <laughs> all be able to commit to you know um a month of playing to re- do what we did last year like th- that's not gonna happen for a long time as much as yeah. i want it to happen it's just not feasible for me um it's not feasible for you it's not feasible for david let alone you know the, the stars aligning for all three of us you know i think a week right. is doable not anytime soon uh, i was satisfied but every now and then i get the itch but like, I just can't. I just know like the commitment to the the time commitment. commitment. Like out of, it's. <laughs> but that's um, what makes it fun. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Without that huge commitment, everything's much easier. Everything's more common, and it's just I don't think it's as fun. But that's the trade off. You know, not every right. game is Rust. You know, I just want to build a fort with my friends, though. At the end of the day, it, it's the closest to like us being young kids again and like when we would go out in the woods and be like let's build a fort and then not actually build anything but just Here's like what we're gonna do spring break because i have off you're gonna fly over here you're gonna take off for work david's gonna do the yeah. same thing i'm sure the government will love that and we're all gonna hang out my house and we're all gonna play together <laughs> We got to make a blanket fort and set up all our computers down in the same room. You know what I mean? Like just yeah, and eat yeah, a bunch yeah. of Doritos and soda and then get sick. Um, yeah, so that was my video games for the year that I can think of. There were some Switch games that I can't remember. Um, Mario Kart is always, um, but whatever. Let me get into movies here. Um I guess I'll go through my, like, I guess what I would call my top five, and then I'll do some special shout outs to other ones. Um, what's nice about the AMC app, I've been an A list member technically off and on because 2020, they just canceled it because there was no movies showing. Um, right. But I've, been, I've, I've had this now since, according to this, 2019 of April. And what you can do is you can do it by past 60 days 30 days then you could do it by year which is kind of fun because then i can be like here's all the movies i went and saw this year and when right right, right. uh okay. so okay. it's kind of cool to be like oh yeah i did see uh i actually looked up because i remember we talked about it on a couple other episodes like what was the last movie you saw before the pandemic and i always thought it was 1917 nope it was uh um it was the invisible man on march 3rd it was my last movie and I saw in 2019, dude, I was freaking cooking, living near the movie theater there. Yeah, I was seeing those like, dude, I saw so many fucking movies in 2019. I think it was over 35. And some of them I'm like, Uh-oh. why did I, like this movie wasn't even good. I see but, like, maybe we just a went. tenth of that <laughs> every year. Uh, but it's like some of these movies I was like, oh yeah, that was a forgettable one. But like we went and saw it because we're like, we have it. Let's go see this random You're movie. You're really getting your money's uh, worth out of that subscription. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to me, it's like I get my mind's worth just by even seeing it in Dolby. I try to always see like movies I'm really interested in, like when they're in Dolby, because that's my preferred way is watching a movie in Dolby. No Dolby. Then it's IMAX. Up here. Then it's digital. Yeah, I think it's only an AMC thing, I believe. Uh, and there's not yeah, many the AMCs only AMC up there. in the area does not have it, which sucks. Really? Um, yeah, because I didn't. I didn't see Fast uh, X or Guardians, uh, and Dolby. Uh, so I watched in total, according to AMC, at least in the movie theater. I think around. I think if I counted correctly, twenty three or twenty four, um, which is quite a bit. So that's about two a month, which was gets my money's worth. Uh, some of the movies I saw technically were old, like twenty twenty two releases, like Shin Ultraman, uh, mm. How to Blow Up a Pipeline, two really good movies. How to Blow Up a Pipe- Pipeline, I think I talked about on this show before. Really fucking good movie. If you're a, if you consider yourself a radical 
person politically, and I mean on the left leaning, <laughs> this is a must watch, uh, in my opinion. It is a movie that I think also liberals should watch because I think it challenges uh, the the question of like when is so whether or not you agree with how that what they're doing, it's more of just like, at what point in society are we okay with certain things, and at what point are we tolerant with it? So, and I actually listened to a podcast that the directors did and talking about that, where it's like people got mad about the people who painted, um, who put paint over the, not the Mona Lisa, but at the Louvre there, they you know they splashed paint on it on these you know, and they're like, oh, why would they do that? Blah 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 that's not how you should protest or don't block traffic. That's, you know, and there's like, what is, and like, there's always like this, Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. And then like, this movie is about, basically it's a heist movie and it's shot in a very like 1970s way, but it takes place in modern time. It's about a group of random people who, uh, maybe not all of them are politically aligned, but all of them have the goal of blowing up this pipeline to send a message to, uh, oil and gas companies. And it's, it's shot in a way where it kind of shows each character as the heist is happening, um, as the process of them making the bombs, going to blow up the pipeline, and so on and so forth. Um, and so there's people like in the they make characters who are like, yeah, I don't really like this character's political alliance maybe fully, but there's a reason why he's out here. And but it, it in the general, I don't want to go too far into it because technically 2022 movie, but it was in theaters in 2023. Uh, is that it beg it asks the question of like what are you personally and what is society also at what point will this be a tolerable thing where you're like, you know what, they're right? Or is this right? At what point at what point is climate change, for example, gonna push you to eventually actually do something? And that's kind of what the movie's about. It's questioning, I think, of you know, how, is it, how much does that have to personally affect you before you act on it versus maybe seeing how you need to act on it based off what your community is saying or what other people are saying. But those are some special shout outs. But anyways, I saw 24 movies and I saw the big ones and I'll start with one of the big ones. I don't know if I'll rank these by like best. Maybe, I, you know, okay. I will, whatever. This one is my fifth favorite one. Oppenheimer, okay. Okay. Uh, a three and a half hour film. Uh, I saw it in Dolby, if I remember correctly. Maybe it was IMAX. I think it was Dolby. Actually, I can just look right now. Um, this movie, you know, had a lot of hype going into it. It tied in with Barbie. I did the Barbie Heimer. I started with Barbie in the morning, and I watched Oppenheimer in the evening. Uh, it was fun to see people dress up for that and stuff. <laughs> um, and I was going in being like, okay, how depressing is this movie going to be? Um it doesn't say, I guess, what... I think it was Dolby. Oh, no, it's IMAX. Auditorium 1. Uh, it's IMAX. Uh, so I saw an IMAX. And... Because I think it was shot in IMAX So you're getting well. those tall shots there. You're getting, getting those tall your... shots. Now, yeah. I'm sure it was a great IMAX experience. Probably not as good as Zack Snyder's cut of the Justice League, which was <laughs> four by three. Oh, not even. It was like... like just like five by Whatever. six or nine by ten, almost a square because it was super IMAX or some bullshit way to get it in it. Yeah. Um I think this movie is a little too long. That's my one critique of it. But I also don't know what I would cut. Besides maybe mm. like some dialogue. This movie isn't an action film, by the way. And this is one of two movies on here that I, I will it was say nice to blow up Japan. <laughs> Yeah, uh, two movies I have on this list of my top five that doesn't. What I like about it is that I don't even realize it until you're you know you're finishing it or whatever. Is that there wasn't much action in this? Like it's just actors freaking acting, writing freaking writing. It doesn't rely on. You know, this isn't a shot at Marvel because, like I said, the fun movies are, are. Or I think we talked before we recorded. Like fun movies are for fun. I have. The yeah. Meg 2 is one of my freaking shout out movies, you know, where it's like, it's about the action, right? It's about the fighting and the, the, the set pieces. Oppenheimer has its big set piece of the bomb being tested, right? Um, but like, that wasn't like the cool part. It was how you're able to like, just be emotionally invested 
and what the characters are saying, how they're getting to the point, and knowing you know the outcome. We all know the outcome from history, but it's like just seeing it from, you know, this. And there's been a critique of that I've seen, and I don't know if I agree with it. I, I hear it, though. Like, I understand where it's coming from, and I think there's a time and place for it, but I don't think it was in this movie of, and this is spoilers, I guess, there isn't a scene being shown of the bomb being dropped on Japan. Like, literally, like, there's not, like, an explosion in Japan, mm-hmm. you know, showing people. And some people have said that, like, uh, 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 that there should have been that to show, like, how bad the atomic bomb is. And I, you talk about media literacy, I argue this movie is pretty clear in showing that like yeah the bomb isn't good and he knew that and this is a fault of him the the real life person that he still went through with it anyways the biggest question they ask is like was this the right thing to do is this just adding a ticking time bomb you know it's the cold war question i think is we pushed ourselves to the point of like of the politics and everything we almost killed ourselves like just wiped out the whole earth and it's about that. That's the question. And there is a scene where it does show what his view of like the impact of like knowing that, yeah, we just did this and we're doing it again. Uh, and I argue that this movie does a good job of showing like, yeah, the bomb is bad, but it's the showing of why he got to that point. And I think um, you're, I, you can make your own opinion about the person. I think it shows that he is morally wrong and he followed the path that he he was doing because of at first it felt like of a pride of being a good you know being the scientist but then realizing how he's being used in america and it they and also showing the belief in the propaganda that the russians were going to do it which they probably would have but they also didn't want russia to invade japan because they thought right because they were going to claim and yeah 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 and also, as a way to show it, Russia, the way they ended it was to stop it right then and yeah. there. Show Russia yeah. we can do it, and to prevent them from taking any more land. Yeah, but it just shows him. It shows America, I think, in a in a, a critiquing light of using the bomb. Maybe not as the full. That like, wasn't the full message of the film, but it was more of just about Oppenheimer. That's what the freaking movie's called. Uh, so, style. like, I I get where people are talking about. Like, I want to see that, but there's been plenty of movies like freaking Godzilla that have talked about. Why this? Why it was a war crime and why it shouldn't happen again? If you want that I remember message, the beginning of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, <laughs> where he hides in that refrigerator to survive Bikini right. Atoll's bomb or whatever it was. Yeah, <laughs> but no, the, all the That's actors nice. in it are are phenomenal. Um, it's one of those movies that I don't know if I'll watch again in full because it's just three and a half hour long. Like I have to be, you know, what I mean, you have to make time for that. That's a long mm-hmm. film. But it's in the top five for me for this year. It's one of the best movies probably in the last five years that I've watched easily. It's definitely a good experience. Um, some people said, you should have watched that before Barbie. And I'm like, no, nah, this is a movie you should be fucking thinking about and sleeping on because it, it challenges your, you know, it does challenge a bit about our education of the bomb that we didn't have any choice in it, um, which isn't true. And it, and it also starts a dialogue like the one I'm just having here. So, like, that to me is whether or not you agree with, like, the – maybe it should have been more on showing how negative the bomb is. At least we can have the conversation now. You wouldn't have had it if this movie didn't exist because why would that come up in a normal conversation? Yeah, a lot of people would and they don't think about it. Yeah. Uh, so that's number five. I'll go a little bit more fun with this one. Speaking of Japan, uh, a lot of these are actually uh, Japan or uh, in, in its work. Uh, Shin Kamen Rider. Mm. My boy's last. Is it Kamen of... or is it Kamen? Kamen Rider. Came... I heard Kamen. Well, I mean, they say Kamen Rider, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> okay. uh, but this is made by uh, uh, Hidaki, Hidaki Ano, who did Evangelion, but he did Shin Gorjira, he did Shin Ultraman. And this is his third Shin Kamen Rider um, as part of the, they call it like a Shin multiverse. Like they, they're not connected, but they're part of this. Tonally. Tonally that they're all done by him because he has a style to it. And if you watch Evangelion, this is basically Evangelion if it was live action in terms of cartooniness of uh, action and also just like what the fuck. Um, 
out of all of them, this one was the most, I think, almost uh, uh, stylized, I guess is the best way to describe it. It's clearly he wanted to do a, a, a homage to the original Kamen Rider like series that came out in the 60s. People don't know that this is. He's basically a superhero who has like a beetle like mask on yeah. and he drives a motorcycle. And it's uh, one of the early, uh, I think I'm pronouncing this right, tokusatsu uh, yeah. things, Power aka Ranger Power Rangers. People. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They love Spider Man so did... because he, <laughs> he fits that bill. Right. Uh, I know there was a Japanese Spider Man that was super yeah. popular too around this time. Uh, but yeah, Kamen Rider had his own song and all that, kind of like Ultraman, uh, very popular. And yeah, so he just basically kind of took, I guess what I believe is the first season of that show, the original show, and turned it into a movie and made some differences into it. But like a lot of the action sequences are almost shot by shot, the same as the original, just redone. Because some of them were like so good at the time that he's like, I don't, need to make any changes these are fucking fantastic and i don't know much about Kamen rider going into this and now i'm just like dude this is fucking rad like the action <laughs> scenes are just over the top and it's they're, they're funny they don't take themselves too seriously there's one scene when there's a bat dude saying you can't hit me because i am I watched that there clip. yeah and then he's like but i can jump this specific meter because I'm a grasshopper or whatever, something to that effect where it's just like, of course you can just like whatever, almost anime bullshit. Like you talked about earlier. It's just like, of course I can hit that. So he does. And he has this special move of doing like a kind of like a kick a flying kick that he does. Um, but his outfit sick, they use all practical effects for the most part, except for some fight sequences. I don't understand most of the, I, I think the plot was definitely, kind of loose and goofy but i'm like whatever because it's clearly based off the show but the acting is good in it it's fun um and uh i don't know if it tops shin gorjira for me but it's just a fun film i'm definitely gonna watch it again before i go to japan to see if i can find uh any more uh you want to see if you can find cayman in real life and have him sign yeah I think there might be like, yeah, I see if he's around. Um, But no, I really like this movie. Um, If you're in, if you just want a weird, I think it's like what, an hour and a half maybe uh, of just fun stunts and goofy shit. I don't know. Maybe you get high and watch it. I don't know. It's a fun movie. Uh, Top four. Speaking of uh, action and Japan, John Wick chapter four, number three, John Wick chapter four. Somehow they topped three. I didn't think they I could do it. I didn't see this movie. I need dude, to. D- dude, I watched it in Dolby. The amount of gunshots, <laughs> knives, punches that I heard at full blast was amazing. No, I, they somehow topped it. I was worried about the length, too, because it was long. But I literally watched John Wick 3 hours before. We watched it and then went, had dinner and went to the theater and watched this because I was like, I want to know because it's been a minute since I watched it. I have it on 4K. It was actually one of the first 4K discs I bought. Hmm. And I've been saving it because I was like, when John Wick 4 comes out, I'm going to watch it. And I love the freaking cover of the purple and whatever. Um, but yeah, it picks up right where we left off. And no spoilers, but there's the, they, I don't know how they fucking did it, but they did it. They upped the ante in such clever ways. They're like, I saw they made it more... Mm-hmm. That was reminiscent of a video game called Hotline Miami. Yes. There's a whole <laughs> 15 minute sequence of it. And it's, you just know they had how much work they had to take to just yeah. execute that at a phenomenal level. That's just one section. There is, I kid you not, like it, it's like nonstop set piece after set piece after set piece after set piece. And it feels good. There's a set piece that's in Japan. And he fights samurais okay. and shits, and, and and it's just. Then obviously cinematography is always good. There's I went to Paris recently, and there's a whole Paris sequence in there, and I went to all the sites, and I'm like, this is fucking sick because I know they shot that on site. There's one scene where there's a bunch of stairs, and he fights dudes, and then really fucking good. I climbed the fucking stairs. I'm like, I climbed the same stairs. I, can't I climbed the John Wick stairs. Yeah, and I need uh, to find the Joker stairs. <laughs> and, yeah, and I'll send you pictures of it if you ever watch it uh, of 
the actual like places that because uh, we went to all the same spots that they did. I, it's so fucking good, man. Like I don't know. Like I three is really fucking good because I think they just did pacing is very good and just set piece after set piece. They somehow did it again and better. I'm like they did this so well and it's so funny. There's moments of a lot of humor where they're like, "We know why you're here." At this point, he like he he gets hit by cars. He gets shot at <laughs> multiple times. And they're like, we don't give a fuck. He's John Wick. Like compared to like the first movie where it's like, he, you know, he gets beat up, but like this are like, yeah, he gets hit by like five different cars to the point where it's a, a bit at one point where they're like, boom, he gets to spy another car, gets hit. And they're like, how is this dude still alive? He's like, it doesn't fucking matter. Cause it's John Wick. So good. And yeah, but I do just... like, I having mean, not seen John Wick chapter four. Um, you're right on that last part, but there's also what separates him from like the Jack Reacher show that, you know, is, is back on Amazon or whatever. Like there's a huge vulnerability to him and how Keanu Reeves per- performs and, you know, portrays him um, that makes it feel tense and compelling and like not, he's not, you know, Luke Cage from the Netflix Marvel show that just can take a bunch of bullets just cause he's cool. You know what I mean? Like he's, He's going to take him. It's going to hurt. And like, you know, he's, he might not be able to do things because of that. You know, he, yeah. he would fit the feeling yeah, he definitely, that he could die, you know, because of all that. Yeah, stuff. So. this is definitely, uh, and I've said it a couple times in every episode, one of my favorite things in like action movies or even Kung Fu movies or whatever is like the, I'm too angry to die. This is at full effect in this movie. He, like I said, he gets hit by cars to the point where it's, you're like, is this, am I supposed to laugh at this? Yes. It's fucking hilarious that, like, some of the shit he goes through. He gets thrown through the ringer cartoonishly, but it fucking works. And then, yeah, you're rewarded with cool set pieces and, like, you're like, okay, well, they did this in this other movie. They're like, how are they going to do this again? They're like, oh. And they have another new character in it who, uh, uh, and I won't spoil too much, but it's just, he's a, he's like a, one of John Wick's, like, assassin, like, world people. So, like, you know, he's one of the best, but he's blind. And he does a lot of cool fucking shit while being like, obviously the actor is not really blind, but he's like a known Kung Fu actor, but uh, or karate movie actor, but he, he didn't want to just be like everyone else. They, so they gave him a cool thing of like, he's blind, but he had, and he has a sense of humor with him and he's friends with uh, John wick, but then he, his job is to hunt him down. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so like it adds that to the dilemma. He's like, are we going to fight? Like, okay. And then like, he's blind and he's using like, he'll be like tapping and then shooting when he hears a noise. It's just, it's so fun. Just a fun freaking movie. You can't, I, yeah. Highly recommend. What was it? Number three. Yep. Yeah. Number two. Yeah. So Oppenheimer was a serious film, but I think this movie was better and was, didn't do as well as box office and it's killers of the flower moon. Another long movie. Scorsese. Oh. Hmm. And after this movie, I'm mad at myself that I haven't seen more Scorsese movies. Cause this movie, speaking of movies that have, they have action parts to it, or there's some things that happen in terms of, you know, maybe there's an explosion or a fight or whatever, but this movie is 90% dialogue where actors got to act. Writing's got to write. And this movie, if you think it's going to be a feel good movie, you're, it's not, but it has flowers in the title. I know, I know. Everyone loves to look at the moon. No, this is based off a, a true story of, uh, let me make sure I get this correct, of the uh, Osage people. Uh, so in Oklahoma areas where they had land in the 1920s and they discovered oil on the land. So a lot of the Osage people were able to sell their land to these companies, to the white people, and some of them got married to help you know, get more money, blah, blah, blah. But that started becoming a thing when white people were purposely marrying these uh, uh, these people who own this land, and then they would have them done, killed because of they would have contracts being like, if they die, I get the land, these uh, oil fields. So the movie's about uh, uh, looking on his name, Jesus Christ, Leonardo DiCaprio's char- character Ernest Burkhart and his. Uncle, if I remember correctly. Yeah, William Hale, played by Robert De Niro, uh, about how they kind of come up with a scheme to 
marry uh how Ernest is gonna marry uh Molly Burkhart, who will become Molly Burkhart, who's played by Lily Gladstone, really fucking good uh actor, actress. Um and I don't want to spoil it because it's like one of those movies that you just got to it's long okay. but didn't feel long. It it's such a really good gripping story and you just you should be angry by the end of this film. Hmm. And then it has a really good I think ending about and this I, I don't, I'm fine kind of it's not really a spoiler um but it it talks about how we fetishize these kind of stories to the point where it's, it's oh this is entertainment to us. That's wow that's crazy. That's so bad. It play it actually ends with uh, I'm not gonna. Spo- I won't spell that end part of it, but it talks. The ending basically uh, towards the end tells you like, "Hey, this is like your murder mystery podcast that you listen to, mm. or this is your true crime mo- uh, documentary you watch." Yeah, yeah. We're yeah, like, yeah. "Wow, that's so. Why would that happen?" And then like, and you're just like, "Whatever about it." You move on with your day. This movie will punch you in the gut and make you think about it for three days, hmm. hopefully longer, because this movie is talking about. Just one example of genocide, uh, just, yeah, genocide is the best way to describe it, of, uh, 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 it's of murder of a family for oil. It's a, uh, this is just one story. There's so many stories like this that we don't even know about because those people have been killed off. Families have been annihilated for land. And it's just, I don't know, it was just a very powerful story. And I know I've had family members who watched it, like, going in, oh, I heard it's good. I'm like, yeah. And then they tell me, like, oh, my God. Hmm. I, like, I don't know, like, I'm very mad. I'm like, yeah. (laughs) And this is not that long ago. Like, 1920s, people think, oh, it's, it's like, no, like, our grandparents were born around then. You know, it's three generations ago, four generations ago. And yeah, this shit yeah. is still happening now, just in a different way, and we don't talk about it. But yeah. I shot out to Scorsese for being like... And that's an Apple Plus show, right? It's or coming out, I think, movie. in two weeks. Yeah, on Apple TV, so you can watch it on there. Um, highly recommend it. Definitely sit down. Nice. But, like, yeah, it's I can't... I don't want to spoil it. it. There's too much in it that I want to talk about that spoilers, but I don't, <laughs> I don't want to spoil it, but... Well, I'll, it's on my list. It's on my list. I, it's definitely one of those, at least watch it once. It I, I might be not a movie you might want to watch multiple times because it is that dark and just like, oh my God. Because you know what's happening as you're watching. You're like, dude, fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. And they're like, why are we showing you all this? And then I feel like the ending kind of tells you why. And then you're like, oh, yeah, because we kind of idolize these people sometimes. Or, yeah, we just think it's doesn't affect me. You know, it hasn't that happened a long time ago? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just really good. Uh, definitely mm-hmm. one of my favorite movies this year. And number one, this shouldn't hit surprise me. folks. Hit me. Your favorite movie of all time. Your new all number time. one movie For 2020. of all time. Super I mean, Mario shit, it Brothers. Could, I'm, I'm not even joking. It could be. So I, I loved Shin Gorgira. Talked about it earlier. Probably my favorite Godzilla movie. Easily. But Shin Barbie? Shin Barbie, that'd, that'd be sick. Um, I'd like to see his take on that. Um, no, Godzilla minus one. And I, I'm not even saying this as a homer, because I know I can be a homer for my things I like. But I'm saying this, like, legitimately, Godzilla minus one was one of the best movies this year and is easily the best Godzilla movie of all time. Really? We are, eat, we are eating, if you're a Godzilla fan, we're eating good. Because we went from Shin Gorgira, which I think is one of the best Godzilla movies, easily top three besides 1954 one. If you want to be like, what is like a good made movie? It goes Godzilla 1954 to Shin Gorgira to this. We're just, hmm. not, so just in the last, this is the second Toho movie in 2016. So yeah, 10 years almost. And okay. this, I don't, I, it just blew my. I had high expectations going in because of like the serious tone it was showing in the trailers. It takes place in post-war Japan, so post World War II Japan, a couple years after. So Japan's rebuilding. They've been firebombed. They've been nuked. It's rebuilding, uh, 
And I like when I watched the trailers, I'm like, okay, this is they're de- they're trying to do more serious. Shin Gorgia was serious at moments, but it still had that comedic element to it w- with Hidaki Eno. Um, and I think Shin Gorgia is a great political story, and he has is my favorite Godzilla design by far. But this one has moments of Shin Gorgia, but then it it just takes in a direction I just did not expect it to be this good. And the reason I think it's this good, I know what is because in the story that is extremely serious. Um, that uh, yeah, I didn't see the movie, but uh, is the reason why I would go see it. Well, yeah, the human it. characters easily the best character human characters I've seen in any Godzilla movie. Because that's been Godzilla's kind of issue over the years is he's not taken seriously because he's just seen as a monster movie for kids. Even the MonsterVerse movies went from trying to do a serious 2014 film yeah. to <laughs> he's to, running with King he's Kong. He's running with, with with King Kong, which is fine. Of the like, earth. Which is fine. Godzilla has his for his, for the kids and for families for fun. I get it. But the original like Godzilla movies were made to be serious and send some sort of political message. The first one was about 1954 was about why you shouldn't use nukes and it the devastation that they cause. And no matter what war you're trying to win, it's not worth using. Um, and then Shin Gorjiro was about the inaction of the Japanese government and the international community towards the earthquakes that they had in 20... Uh, was it 2011? 20 and how that causes... Whatever, sure whatever that time, yeah, where they had the tsunami and also they had the nuclear reactor issues. Mm, uh, Shin right. Gojira is is talking about the inaction and how long it takes to go through the bureaucracy, the bureaucracy of of the Japanese Saving government lives. and how they need and how they need to approve get approval from the UN and the United States because the United States has a huge hand in Japanese politics still to this day. Uh, so that's what that movie's about. This movie is about the 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 desire to live and the 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 fight to live and also about how duty especially in the military or like um honor affects soldiers and affects families affects people it was like the big themes about it i just didn't expect it to be i guess that deep right but like our main character yeah he's he's an ex kamikaze pilot who didn't he he fled and uh it's kind of spoilers but it opens with him coming back he was supposed to go to a battle in kamikaze and he didn't he said his his plane wasn't working and everyone kind of saw through that being like yeah okay but whatever well it's the end of the war they this is like towards the end of the war they know they're losing they know it's a matter of time um but there's some people who gave him you know, like, no, you that's dishonorable, but other you know. people did it. Why didn't you? And then like, Godzilla attacks and he, he and one other guy are only two that let, uh, survive. Um, because of his inaction, he actually has the opportunity to kill Godzilla and he can't do it because he's afraid. Mm. And then he comes back home from this and the war has ended. He comes back home. His family's all dead. Everyone, all the houses are gone, but his neighbor is still alive and she even calls him, you know, a coward for not dying in the war, all that. So that's just the first, like, 10 minutes of the film. I won't go into any further. Um, but it's about him and coming to terms with that PTSD of Godzilla, but also him feeling like he let all those people down. And maybe him not stopping Godzilla when Godzilla comes back, him letting Japan down. So it's a just powerful story. All the characters are so good i just i'm literally blown away this movie i saw it twice and Mm. i never cry in movies but i fucking had a lot of tears building up during this movie during the ending cry during toy story 3 he didn't cry in logan but he cried when godzilla did something logan was definitely close though but this was definitely the like i wanted to but my body was like you can't you can't cry it's okay um but yeah, Godzilla's really cool, and he's evil in this. He's straight up a bad guy, just like Shin Gorjira. I love when Godzilla's a bad guy. And, and this is the first movie, too, where I'm like actually cheering for the humans to like kill Godzilla. You usually um, cheer for Godzilla to kill them all? Yeah. Yeah, go wow. Godzilla, baby. Um, because the human characters are usually like, whatever, it's not that, that bad. 
you know, Japan's been destroyed multiple times. We're good. But yeah, this is, and you don't have to watch any of the Godzilla movies to watch this one. So like you can go watch this. And if you like this, then I can recommend it other ones to you, but please go see this movie. Cause like take away, like we, we've talked about uh, like comparing like video game movies, how like they are on a curve. This would be S tier of S tier for me. Like it, it, really? it there isn't a Godzilla curve for this one. This one is a well-made movie that happens to have Godzilla in it, hmm. but he isn't the main focus. It's about this character who's overcoming his, what he feels is a lack of courage. And yeah, it's just good. But the guy who made it, which is interesting is uh, Takashi Yamazaki. He's actually been wanting to do a Godzilla movie for like 15 years. And this is finally his moment. And like he knocked it out of the park, but he's clearly a big Godzilla fan. I watch interviews and all his favorite movies. It can kind of make sense. Favorite Godzilla movies. I'm like, Oh, that makes sense. Why you did it with these characters or with these things. Um, And he actually made, he had a cameo of Godzilla in one of his movies, comedy movies that opens in the beginning of the movie. And ever since then, Toho was like, okay, this guy wants to make a Godzilla movie. He actually did a Godzilla ride that also takes place in world war two, post world war two. He designed like one of those like 4d rides. Okay. Where Godzilla fights King Ghidorah and you're on like a car and you're driving around trying to dodge Godzilla and King Ghidorah as they're fighting. Um, and that was in 2018. So when it was announced, people were like, oh, he's finally getting his, like, they kind of gave him little appetizers to kind of keep him interested. And then they're finally the letting based him. based off the ride. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, uh, Godzilla's really cool in this. He has a cool element to him that I wasn't expecting uh, as well. Don't want to spoil that. Um, really cool design. Hope to get. I'm hoping to get a figure a of him when I go. Okay. Yeah, he has a mortgage. Um, yeah, fucking Godzilla minus one is it? It, it really can like I had high expectations and it just blew without, it out of the water. Sorry to interrupt. Can you tell me without yeah. spoilers why it's called Godzilla minus one? Uh, this isn't. Yeah, is not He's. It's been in kind of trailers. Basically, got uh, Japan's at zero because of after World War Two and Godzilla coming and attacking is now they're in the negatives. Is kind of the mm, okay the he, Japan as a country is in the negatives uh, hmm. with Godzilla coming. So it's definitely a, when I first heard the title, I'm like, I thought maybe it was going to be like a prequel or something to 1954, like a way to reboot something. But yeah, Toho is, this is Go- Toho's second Godzilla film in 10 years. Uh, their last one was, sorry, last one was before Shin Gorgira 2016 was 2004. So it's been, oh. uh, they've done little, side things for their youtube channel and stuff but this is their full length one but yeah it's godzilla's 70th anniversary uh and they just i think dropped their best godzilla film maybe the best godzilla film ever uh out of his 30 movies that he has hmm. it's not even close besides maybe shingers here i can hear an argument for but just in terms of, i think it's a modern retake of 1954 in a modern way so yeah and i like I don't normally say, hey, go watch. Yeah, I really liked this. Is my favorite thing. Go watch it. Like, like legitimately, if you like movies, <laughs> just go, just go you, see sir, it. You, sir, do you enjoy a film? <laughs> You'll enjoy Godzilla. If you want to cry, you will like Godzilla Minus One. And it was cool to see that, like, Academy Awards have uh, recognized it, um, that people that I respect on the internet and whatnot with their movie takes for like, Oh yeah. Godzilla minus one is legit. Like it, this isn't Godzilla fans just trying to hype up their shit. Like, no, this is a legitimately fantastically well-made movie for a budget awesome. that isn't very big. <laughs> so. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Devin, for giving me your top five movies of yeah. the year. Um, I understand zero was super Mario and your minus one yeah. on the list is Barbie. Um, but yeah, yeah. I have uh, some special shout outs to Meg sure. to the trench shark movie. Go watch okay. it. Plane starring, uh, Gerald Butler. It's one of those like movies that like just clearly it's just maybe, I don't know if I, I can't, I didn't read up on it, but it just seemed like one of those, like we want to do a, just a cool action movie with like mm. Gerard Butler and we need to find like a plot. And it's just like, he's a, He's uh, flying a plane on New Year's Eve, actually, and 
he crashes in some like island that happens to be like during a civil war or something like that okay. and then he has to like get and also he has a, a convict on his plane who they couldn't get on a different plane so he had to take them and is and that course, convict they... vin diesel and pitch black <laughs> no 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 <laughs> They're transporting but... But um, it has cool action sequences and a, just a decent plot to carry me through the film. Speaking about and, just uh, action movies meant to just be a vehicle for an action movie star, there's a Jason Statham movie, Beekeeper. That's oh, yeah, I, I might like see that. that. It looks it looks stupid fun. Yeah. Someone on Twitter um, once said, like, movies like this should just be titled Jason Statham and then the number that it is. Just because, <laughs> like, that's funnier. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Plane is definitely up there. Um the TV show Monarch Legacy of Monsters is pretty good for the MonsterVerse uh, stuff. It's Ooh. on Apple. Sorry for yawning. Has has Had the a... best. All right. Has um um Kurt Russell and his son playing the same character in it, which is fun from different oh. times. Um, yeah. but it has the best human characters in all the MonsterVerse, which I guess the bar wasn't that high, but they did it. So far, I'm actually more interested in the the Remember characters. Remember when they had Brian that. Cranston killed off, and then you watched yeah, his shitty know. son. Yeah. Isn't he number yeah, one? Uh, yeah, so Monster... I haven't finished it yet, but it's currently ongoing. Uh, the Last Voyage of the Demeter, which is a... If you know, the Demeter is uh, Dracula. It's the boat he takes. So it, it's the whole movie just takes place of like what was happening on that boat. It's a Grab cool a horror boat. movie. Reminds me of like the uh, early 2000s monster movies. Use practical effects, small budget, has a fun cast. And it has a kind of an interesting twist at the end that I was not expecting. And uh, Dracula's cool. Dracula's always cool. Uh, Infinity Pool, starring one of the Skarsgård brothers. This avant-garde film I really liked. Uh, it's, it has one of the craziest, trippiest sex scenes in it I've ever seen. Which is fucking okay. rad. Don't say uh, that or the Gen Z kids will be like, that's so unnecessary. Yeah. Oh, no, definitely necessary because this movie had plenty of sexual tension. Um, because the one of the characters is trying to manipulate the other uh, in a sexual Uh-oh. way. Uh, we call that statutory rape. Where I come it's from, it's uh, I don't know, it's just a weird movie, but it's a twenty four, and it just it one of those cool movies. Then I watched on the plane recently. I just wanted to shout out a documentary, something different in my list, and I kind of enjoyed it. Uh, Time Bomb Y two K an HBO mm. documentary about Y2K because I've always heard about Y2K and had a general knowledge of it, but I'm like, we were what four is years real? old. <laughs> like really what was like, how big of a deal was it? Cause when people talk about it, they're like, Oh, whatever. It wasn't that. But then watching this documentary, I'm like, no people actually like, there was some genuine concern yeah. in the public. At one point there was like 60% of Americans believe something would happen on Y2K because of it. And just knowing like how it happened, like all because uh, software companies early, early on wanted to save uh, bandwidth, basically. And so they try to cut corners, and one of the cut corners was like, let's cut the dates. And they're like, oh, that will, we'll fix it by then. And then no That's one what did. That's the, literally what the mind calendar was. It was like, yeah. we're going to replace this by 2012. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. So that was interesting. And then they they showed, like, interviews and, like, um, people in the the nineties, they had uh, Clinton like going to a school and like talking about how he set up Ethernet. And they showed like early FaceTime him and like some people. Um, so it was just interesting to kind of get a black like a uh, jump in time that I didn't uh, really experience because I was too young. Um, and just seeing like the news, like what was the news talking about? And I see in this a lot of early conservative like christian conservatism that we're seeing now at full fledge with like QAnon and trump oh the conspiracy uh, type stuff yeah or just like doomsday prepping or mistrust mm. of the media but not in the way that is media literacy more of just hillary clinton drinks virgin blood level of stuff that like oh this was around yeah. way before then what things that I are think, true but you know uh <laughs> thing well just like what I like, people always think conservative, like what we were at kind of politically started with Trump. It's like, no, it's been building up to yeah, Trump. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trump was almost a, a active uh, activator of, of this. And so watching it, they kind of show that to a degree where there was a lot of 
mostly right wing Christian people who are like, Y two K is actually the coming of Christ. Uh, you know, we need to prep now. This is actually a sign. So it's like a lot of they show a lot of how people were prepping in a lot of, uh, especially in states like Oklahoma, uh, even Colorado, um, showing like how there's software developers who are more leaning conservative are like, yeah, I knew this was coming. So I spent all my money on a doomsday prep like location in a, in the desert somewhere. And they, he shows it and he has guns and all these people buying like, yeah. Then people who are capitalizing on it, who like people like an Alex Jones, for example, or whatever, Mm. or any of these uh, Christian news networks do is like buy this, this kit because it'll help you during the rapture, you know, like Mm, 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 (laughs) that kind of stuff. They're like, Oh, buy this Y2K stuff. Buy it. Watch, buy my VHS set where I explain 10 things you need to do before Y2K, you know, people selling stuff. And it's just, it's interesting to watch when, you know, you have what we have now, um, just to see the similarities in that just in a different way. They also talked about like the history of like, uh, software and computers, which was kind of cool. They did a quick segment on that okay, and showing how like there's people in the nineties talking about like, yeah, I think the internet will be great. I think it'll also have like issues with like, you know, news being spread too quickly or being misinf- misinformed. The issue is we're too informed now. And like, it's just interesting. They're like, Oh, they were fucking right. <laughs> some of these people were spot on. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And some people were like, yeah, uh, some people are afraid of computers and the internet and, it's, we don't know where it will be in 20 years. And I'm like, now I think of AI and all that kind of shit. And it's just like, I don't know, really interesting. But I watched that on the plane and it's like an hour and a half. I think that is it. That's everything I wanted to say. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Devin. Thank you, Ethan. Hey, that was me. Uh, this was a very fun episode of the Sonic Movie Show. Remember, folks, we are on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Threads, and the like on YouTube. Uh, which I'm sure you're watching at youtube.com slash at Sonic Movie Show. We are on these other places at Sonic Movie Show. I am on Twitter at Ethan Absolutely. Devin is on Twitter at Cursona Fun. This is a fun time. Hey, let us know in the comments below on this YouTube video which movie or video game you played or watched in 2023 that you enjoyed and uh, if we should have paid attention to them. And um, just let us know that you agree with us on the things that we like. We're 110% right. We've never been wrong. On everything. That is the Sonic Movie Show guarantee. See you next time, guys. (laughs) Adios, as they say sometimes. Bye-bye.